Penium. Penium. Hello and welcome to the Salad Cast on Saturday, the seventh of February, twenty fifteen. I'm your host Dan Train. Joining me today, Zachary Burgess. I'm having a drink. And Robert Kemp. I'm not. But you hadn't actually managed to get back into your seat. Ah, you sat on my headphone cable. Get off that. Uh, I was trying to avoid that. <laughs> well, you really didn't. <laughs> you sat on it about as directly as you possibly could have done. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was right where my arse should go. I have a drink, but it's too hot, so I haven't drunken the drink. Drunken? No. Drank? Drunk. Yeah, it is drank. I was, I was saying drunk. it rock on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> when you, like, run programs and stuff, or you're describing something as a run, do you, like... I, I'm never quite sure whether to say run in the past tense or ran. That. Well, I ran the so, program. Yeah, I ran the race. Or, it's definitely ran, isn't or, it? I, I, on this run. Otherwise it'd be run. I ran. Yeah, but a run singular is okay. A run, you can have a run in the past, but it's a verb to... to, to, to is, a run is a noun in that case, isn't it? Mm. Do you say was run as well? Or do you say yeah. was ran? The race was run. I ran the race, right? I guess. The oh, race was run me. by oh, me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. What's the amb- it, amb- So if you, put, if you put on the race, ambiguity. like, are you, are you running the race? As in, you, you run the event? <laughs> that's, just a du- you... that's just a homophone, or, isn't it? Right, yeah. That's just a double meaning of run, isn't it? Like, um, run the show and um, run the race is kind of more literal than run the show, which is organized, isn't it? So if you organise a race, that's confusing because you say you could say I run the I I ran the race, and they're like, how fast did you run it? And you're like, no, I like organised it. But I, is a I ran it do, when you when you're saying like a race or something? Do you say the race is run, or when describing about the activity that you do in a race, or is it the race is ran? <laughs> or it is the race is run. Race is run. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you ran. I don't know why I bring this up. It's just like. <laughs> I, thought, I, thought, I thought I'd consult the uh, the markets grammar. grammar. Yeah, what do you think, Zeg? Okay, I'm done with this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> that was the dumbest yeah. start to a podcast. You well, let's break directly involved. into grammar. You what? didn't even contribute. No, yeah. That was the point. You're, you're, you're the like perfect that. people for me to ask. <laughs> you were a DNF in this race. <laughs> <laughs> it's more like a DNR, but that means mm-hmm. something different. <laughs> DMR. I think it does DMR stand for like designated marksman rifle oh is that what it stands for uh, yeah. that's right yeah <laughs> oh, okay oh. did not know that what if you're not a designated marksman but you don't get it you don't get one <laughs> <laughs> go away Master Chief you don't you're not a, we didn't designate you you can't he probably have to... is he's probably just like designated as everything yeah he's like probably a grenadier and everything as well I mean the point of, of, of DMR is that it, it's per squad isn't it per in yeah. the in the American army or whatever or in the marines or something they have a fire team that's what you call it right and then one guy is the designated like a designated driver he's the designated yeah. marksman and he gets the well, DMR I'd imagine if you're in the army, you probably shouldn't drink if you're the designated driver. So that's that. Whole time. <laughs> All the designated like, yeah. marksmen. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you need a little bit just to steady your nerve. I don't know. Yeah, like playing poker, right? Oh no, or uh, what am I thinking? Pool. You need to have you, oh, yeah. one beer to be good at pool. And darts. You need several beers. <laughs> yes, <laughs> several beers definitely helps. Steadies the you see that You see that thing a few weeks ago? How there's a brand of beer in. Copenhagen, I think it is. Like it's you can't get it anywhere else. Where they they print on the bottle, based on your body mass, how much beer you should have to reach your optimum level of creativity. <laughs> really? Yeah. How much is yours? Like, within within the volume of one bottle, that must be some hella alcohol content. <laughs> but yeah, so it's like a, 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 it was it was a reasonably strong ale. Um, like, but apparently there's a there's a point like like close to the this the size of this bottle or something where if you drink just the right amount you reach that supposedly the optimal creativity um i haven't without, found that but, alcohol helps creativity necessarily i suppose i'm not engaged in the right fields but, um, then, but then you look back at all those old videos of like musicians and stuff of the 70s or something with nothing yeah. but beer on the mixing desk yeah yeah that's true but I, I, I always think they're just geniuses, though, and they could probably do it whacked out on, on drugs, and they'd still be geniuses. 
I don't know. I don't think that alcohol was necessarily helping them. I think they just liked it. <laughs> this is probably true. And I reckon like all the um all the drug influenced creative you know, uh literary and artistic and musical output of like the 60s and stuff i think they came up with it remembering what happened i don't think they came up with it while it was happening like when they were on the acid trips i don't think the beatles were writing music i think they like came down the next day and then went in the studio and were like whoa that was trippy let's make something like? yeah let's, let's, let's try and make music that sounds a bit like that yeah lucy in the sky with diamonds yes that's the one i was immediately thinking of as well just because of that that synth oh. Yeah. Well, apparently, do you remember Mr. Goodhand at, at, at Ipswich School? I do. <laughs> he was a very old, crotchety sort of English teacher of the old school private <laughs> sort uh, of English school teacher. Variety. Didn't you know, teach he was an English teacher, but he was, there are different sorts of English teacher, I mean, and he yeah, was okay. of a sort. He was the old <laughs> I crotchety like the idea sort. Of a, I like the idea of a sort of English teacher. <laughs> He was the guy that the, he's the reason why I say may I have a pint when I when I order a pint. <laughs> may I have a pint? Because one time I said, "Can I have the, the Can I have a pen or something?" And he said, "You may, you may." And uh, oh, he, you can. Yeah, he said you can, and then he just sat there. Well, he he wouldn't hand one. it to me. Yeah. It's like, yeah, fuck you. And he was like, "I, I got to admit, I still do that every now and then." Like, do what? Was. Can, can I have one of these? And I'm like, yeah, you can. And then, oh, you yeah. do it. All oh, right. That's <laughs> your that. your my lesson is to say, "May I have a pen?" And your lesson is to just ignore people when they say, "Can I have something?" <laughs> well, they can. Yeah. That's the thing. No, yeah, well, they can. Give it. Yeah, but they, they, I mean, they, but they, they can. I'm allowing them to. Yeah, they, but t- they haven't they can. asked me to hand it to them. It's so. possible. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, they, you, they can have a pen. Possibly. Anyway, pedantic English teacher. And my point is that he apparently <laughs> of like, went straight back to grammar again. So. He, yeah. he he loved the Beatles and. Um, but he was really, he told us that he was really disappointed when people pointed out that the, that Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, they said they accused it, um, that song in particular of definitely being about drugs because Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds stands for LSD. Um, and that annoyed him. He was like, no, it was a nice song about, about like my daughter's friend from school who painted a picture of my daughter with some stars around it. Well, so he actually had a personal connection to it. No, somehow? no, that's the that he just yeah. he just didn't like to think that the his music that he liked was inspired by drugs. But you have to just listen to the song. It is obviously an acid trip, <laughs> right? Quite well, probably, how, yeah. how's it I'm, go? I'm just trying to trying to run the lyrics through my head. Tangerine dream, the marmalade skies, and and picture yourself on a boat on a river and. Like girl with kaleidoscope Cam- eyes that's, that's and Cambridge, right? Yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> it's just Cambridge. <laughs> I think it's just it's just Cambridge. Maybe it was just maybe it was just champagne. Maybe it's just punting down the cam, drinking lots <laughs> oh, yeah, of champagne. It's, it's, it's actually a very posh song. <laughs> Anywho, we and, managed and, to get free back to Cambridge, and it was just a, a lady that had. A really blingy taste in jewelry, and and trampoline a lot. (laughs) 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 Trampoline, the trampoline. So she's uh, on and off, like periodically in the sky with diamonds. Yeah, as she bounces up and down. Well, she's she's only in the sky while they're saying Lucy in the sky with diamonds, and then during the break between saying it again, she's come down and then she comes back up. Oh, so that's the frequency of the bounce. Okay. Quite a big bounce, better. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a big bounce. More like a bungee jump. That kind of frequency. You have to fall a long way down. Think of but then you'd be always be in the sky, depending on your perspective. That's the trouble. Wouldn't quite work. I think you just need a giant trampoline to perform that song correctly. Good to know. Horn players get on a trampoline. I don't know why I said horn players. I'm thinking of horn oh, no, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking of all you need is love now because of the wah, 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 wah. <laughs> same sort of tempo. <laughs> True. What do you need? I guess a bunch of organs for Lucy and the Sky Diamonds. Yeah, organs and synths. And... What, what did they even use for that sound? Cool sound. I reckon it was that. probably pre 
synth revolution. So Pre-move. it's like mostly organs and stuff and like mellotrons and yeah, you know about mellotrons? Mm-hmm. Well, mellotrons are Trump. the things where you press the key and each, I, I can't remember exactly, but each key is assigned to a reel of magnetic tape, like a tape machine. So you hold down the key and the tape is joined in a loop, so it just goes forever. So you can record things onto the tape and have them play, like while you're holding down the, the key. And then okay. you can make it an instru- into, an, into an instrument that way. Oh, I, I see. Right. Each, each key plays the... The, the the speed of the tape changes based on which key you press or yeah ma- i think there are like different a, tapes bit like a super early sampler or yeah 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 something like that it was a sampler i think of some kind hmm. and i think yeah i so think it's... you could probably change the speed the rate of the tape which would probably change the pitch because it would go well yeah provided if you got it right and you could you know the motors were accurate enough then yeah you could make could make a tape based sampler yeah, I think it was something along those lines. Proper note control. I know there's a, there was a cool. song on the Blur at the 13 album that used the Mel that was called Mellotron Number Five or something. Mm. You used one of those things. Mellotron could be a blue skin pigment. Close in the dark. Well, you lost me. Mello, it, was a, Mello, it was an incredibly terrible work play by Rob. Oh, yeah. so don't, don't even, don't even try. And <laughs> I know, I, I'm trying to pass it out. <laughs> Hang on, Me- <laughs> hold on, Mel- Melotron. Where's the blue coming from? I'm, I'm totally the lost. Tron bit. Oh, yes, tron, okay. Like because when you're in Tron, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> okay, <you're> in the- <laughs> so, <laughs> but this is then, this is like melanin. Play on melanin, yeah. Ah, oh, which is a skin, a natural skin pigment, which is inside your skin, not something you apply to your skin. Like, okay, I was we thinking tattoos or something, or like, or like no, maybe, uh, maybe, body paint or something. Be. It was terrible. <laughs> um, that could be a name for a tattoo parlor. See if anyone gets it. The Melatron. Or is it Ma- just a melon in Tron? How did you work that one out, Zach? How did you? <laughs> that, that is... <laughs> it's it's obvious, but it's also incredibly dumb. <laughs> it's not obvious. <laughs> uh, okay. Rob's riddle for the day. <laughs> Why is Tron is an all blue? Is it? It's like different well, colours. I guess it's no, mostly but blue. I guess m- mostly blue is it? It's all about the blue neons. You see a lot of blue. Yeah. The primary character. Yeah, he is blue. <laughs> Or his armor, armor thing. Is yeah. Blue, if you'd even call it armor, don't they? They have blue light bikes. And the good guys are blue, yeah, basically. basically. Bad things are red. As always. Wouldn't Mellotron just be a more chilled out version of Tron? Yes, Mellotron might be. Yeah. <laughs> the, the central processor or whatever it is just goes, hello. <laughs> And instead of having to blow it up in some way, they just ask it, and they'd be like, "Okay, quite mellow." <laughs> well, so, how you guys been? Yeah, Anything been right. exciting going on? Um, no, actually, it's been quite boring. Two weeks, really. I've changed offices to back to nice, and then in another week, changing again. Great, because my because my agency that I work for is moving office to Farringdon. Um, does this mean oh, you yeah. can spend a week setting up your desk just how you like it and then yeah. just waste time and then you can move it all again and then go, right, okay, I know what I'm going to do, but now it's going to take me all this time to set up again in whatever place I'm now at. Pretty much. That's the plan. I should be able to get another Excellent. screen as well because uh, um, my boss is leaving um, at the end of next week as well, so I'm going to nick one if, and if, uh, if you put nick both his monitors. Post-it, you put a post-it note on it that just says dibs. Yeah, dibs. No, I already talked to him. He's going to put it in my in my crate. Note on it that says broken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then hope no one throws it out by the time you can get your hands on it. So yeah, looking forward to the ridiculous office with like llamas and ping pong table rooms, and it has like themed meeting rooms. Like one of them's like a like a, a like a workshop with a motorbike in it, like a real motorbike. And For some my... reason, when when you said ping pong table rooms, I thought of what you what you'd do is like you'd have a ping pong table in the room, yeah. But then all the walls and the floors and the ceiling would be also ping pong also tables. Ping-pong tables, yeah, yeah. Well, it's not that far <laughs> wow. off that because it's like a... so much bounce. <laughs> it's a room. But then you'd with have the... to come up with some kind of weird like variation of ping pong rules. So it's like 
It doesn't necessarily have to land on the one table, but also like if you fit into specific areas of the wall, <laughs> then it's legal. Ping pong. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's crazy. That's pretty crazy. It'd be like squash, only even more hardcore. <laughs> I saw a picture like, of whether you could play you uh, ping pong in a tube. A- yeah, like a, I was about. Yeah. That's, that's exactly what I was about to suggest. Could you build like a like a uh, you know four cornered ping pong table just rather than cover the walls in it? Just have this have this bizarre uh, square tube. You could have a round tube though. Like, would it work? It's a question. The bounces hmm. would be really weird. If you made it big enough though, maybe it'd be okay. You might have to change the double bounce rule if you're bouncing it off the ceiling and stuff. Off the ceiling, yeah. <laughs> ping yeah. pong on the ceiling. I don't know why that came into my head. <laughs> I don't know. That's a little bit shameful. No dancing on the ceiling for me. So we so, should mention uh, the uh, the Infinity Miner stuff since. Uh, yeah. I love it. It, 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 it is. No, it's Infinity Factory, not Infinity Miner. Oh, Infinity Factory, sorry. My mistake. Yeah, get right. Get you right. could mention Infinity Rider as well in the process if you wanted to. Why? Have you played it or something? No, just no. because it's related. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Same guy. Um, but yeah, after thinking that Zach might not have made it into the top 100 people to complete the game, turns out he was number 23. Oh, yeah. And got a patch to prove it. Yep. Pictures on the Sidecast. <laughs> oh, Sidecast? Have you started on it? So did you sew it on pictures yeah, a... on this podcast? <laughs> we'll just start transmitting like one of those audio image decoding things. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> here's the picture. <laughs> what's like? What's that app on the phone that, that uh, Shazam or something? Shazam this now. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's orange and looks like a conveyor belt. So if you've seen our video of the thing, you kind of know what it looks like. But then if you've seen our video of the thing, you might as well go to happysound.net and see the patch thing. You yeah, could have edited out. it onto the end of the video if you wanted to. Yeah, I could have done, but that would have required doing it again. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's it's no I would check out that video, video, listeners, if you get a chance. It's a pretty nice uh, run through of, uh, without spoiling too much, of uh, the beginnings of quite an awesome looking puzzle game, to be to be fair. And I think, it, I think they're going to get more. He's, I mean, just the fact that it, I know it's very similar to, um, uh, the, the chemical one. Space What's chem. the bloody thing called? Space chem. <laughs> space chem. Yeah. I know it's similar chem to space. space chem, but, uh, I think it will attract people purely because it looks more like Bortle, <laughs> you know, cause it plays. Uh, first. Yeah. I think that will help <laughs> it gain traction. Um, I think they, they couldn't have done it any other way in a weird way because it's, it's, you need the angles to be able to see your way around the environment really yeah. to be able to place the blocks you need to do. The first person controls feel or seem somewhat necessary. Totally. But I think it has an additional benefit that it will, um, it will, if you see a screenshot of it, you think, oh, this will be like, yeah, I can play this like Portal or Antichamber or, or X other indie puzzle games that have that perspective. Hmm. And I think that yeah, might maybe. work in his favour. So, uh, maybe. But, yeah. but then that, that control scheme is often what puts off casuals, at least. That's yeah. true, but, I mean, casuals aren't going to reach space cam, are they? So, <laughs> so oh, no, true, space, true casuals. Yes. Anyway. This is true, but, you know, puzzle games normally have a that, you know, appeal to a, a different audience. Than it's true. I, I watched several other, like, random people playing that game on YouTube, because obviously I would. Because I was like, how, how, well, how are these other people dealing with are they doing getting into this puzzle game or whatever? Mm. And I kind of hope the developer guy is also watching that, because there's certain things where it's, where you you realise that the where it's just like, oh, people didn't pick up on that. Like, the main thing that I see, it's because people come from Minecraft, because it's just like a block based game. Yeah, exactly. So they're sort of they, so the number one thing that a lot of these people often say is like, oh, I keep pushing shift to go down because that's go down in Minecraft, but it brings up the block menu. And it's just like, well, you should rebind your controls. And then sometimes they do actually sort of eventually come to that conclusion, like, oh, I can just rebind the controls. Well, because of course you can. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it's just like that's fair, that's like the first indication that someone is a Minecraft player when they <laughs> just do that all the time. <laughs> yeah. But then the same thing that like loads of people don't pick up on, which is because it's not 
it's not actually tutorialized in the game, which is why it's like, I hope the developer is watching so he can like maybe slip that in somewhere. But like lots of people don't pick up on the click, click and drag to draw lines of blocks. Because okay. when you're coming from Minecraft, you just see them just click loads of times to build a yeah. line. It's like, that's how it works in Minecraft, but there's actually an easier way to do that in this game. <laughs> Is it not tutorial? Is it not tutorialized in that second get? Oh no, I suppose no. you're right, isn't it? You had to tell. It's just like yeah. left, it just tells you left click the place, right click to remove, and it doesn't tell you to click and hold at any point. Yeah, would that not <laughs> no, make a good right. addition to Minecraft, or or would it be too? Yeah, long? it would. <laughs> yeah, probably probably would. But you'd have to do probably quite a lot of work in Minecraft because it would have to like Depends subtract a, a certain number from how many blocks you have as you dragged out the line or whatever. For sure. Well, and isn't there a distance thing? In Freaking out. I'm you sure with those how how distance how far you can actually be. Well, there technically is an infinity bank but it's a long way away yeah. oh, is it? oh. millions and millions of dollars I'm sure somebody can work that out that would take a programmer like an afternoon to figure that out I'm sure yeah, yeah can't be that hard yes yeah, so that kind of thing would be helpful in Minecraft I mean there's a lot of things that would help you a lot in Minecraft like something even more clever than that like I guess Buildcraft sort of has it in a way where when you're laying out like a quarry or whatever you put down markers at each corner and then it builds the whole thing so you're laying out like a square which defines the edges of the mechanism. Mm. It's like you can that would be well useful for Minecraft as well if you could just like point at three like four locations or three I guess because you need to do opposite corners. If you could just point to three four three or four locations and then just have it create a square room out of blocks in your inventory. That'd be well useful for creative stuff or like a or a flat plane if you wanted to do a, do a wall only have to define two points and just have it fill in that whole plane. Mm. Yeah, there's all kinds of ingenious tools like that you it, could use. You just sort of want a square tool, don't you? A bit like a paint pack, is they really drag from one corner. Yeah, exactly. Because they, they so, do, like I said, they do sort of have that in Buildcraft. Hmm. It's just not so, used for that. <laughs> so, Zeg, have you been playing more Infinity Factory? Because we can come back to it in your in your section. Not really. I mean, I finished. I'd finished it already, of course. Yeah. You haven't gone through the uh, mass refining of your uh, solutions, then? That you? No, I went through like half of them. I'll probably get back to it. I haven't really played any workshop stuff either after I made my levels. <laughs> but I'm, you know, waiting to see what happens. He's still been patching it several times. He had, he had like some useful things, like you, there's now a keyboard button to just toggle between alternate versions of blocks. The, like the two different directions of rotator and the two different orientations of welders. Oh, okay, you can just look sense. at one of them and then toggle it into the other one. <laughs> that makes sense. Which makes it much easier. Hmm. And then there's also the I was wondering how they were going to do it because Space Game had to record the solution to YouTube thing. Oh, yeah. Which obviously is, you yeah, know, that makes sense in Space Game. But he wanted to do that again in this game. And so the, far... The camera's a problem, I yeah, suppose. It's like, so far, he doesn't, they don't have YouTube. What they instead have is, like, you position yourself so you're looking at a solution. And then you hit a button and it just makes an animated GIF that loops. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> which is kind of funny. That is kind of funny. So, yeah, there's that. So, um, the physical patch that you got, did you sew it to your lab coat? Is that no. what it looked like? Or did you just oh, stick no, it on no. there? We, 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 yeah, we fudged it. We used some sellotape just for that shot. Oh, you sellotaped it. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't going to put it on my skanky, way too old and probably too small lab coat that I don't have any reason to wear ever. <laughs> well, is that the if I actually had a reason to wear that lab coat... I'd probably have a new lab coat for a start. Other than for playing fake science-based games. Yeah, exactly. Show up your accolades. I'd probably have a new lab coat, and then I might... We should use that picture off. every time you get in a, like, a, the, the top achievement in a puzzle game or something. Just show you... Just, and just, like, <laughs> never going to have it again. Photoshop the symbol out of the patch out with some, some achievement picture. <laughs> Turn it into some kind of big text meme, I don't know. I was thinking about whether that lab coat had ever been washed because it's like oh. <laughs> that's, that's the whole point of lab coats. You're not actually really meant to wash them. Really? Well, it's just because it's just like you. Well, it's like they're absorbing like a whole bunch of weird chemicals, and then you're introducing those weird chemicals into your washing machine. That's uh, not necessarily the best idea. Just oh, I see your them point. Burn them or something. Yeah, just get rid of them at some point. <laughs> but I, I think that that lab coat does. Surely you just wash lab coats with other lab coats. Well, yeah. I mean, you could just have like a communal do them all at once mm. then again that might even be you've like maybe different departments like if you had yeah. weird chemicals that like combine badly <laughs> yeah you, you need some kind of like 
specially segregated washing machine in case something explodes. Yeah, I'm sure there's ways to do it. But yeah, it's like you're not really meant to wash that. Or if you do... Just water. Or, like, or, or yeah, dry don't, cleaning. Don't do them with anything else for a start, probably. <laughs> don't spread those chemicals around. How does dry cleaning work? It's a, not actually really that dry, is it? Technically. No, it's not dry. It just doesn't use water. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's like Chemicals. alcohol or some shit, I'm sure. No. I don't think it's alcohol. Booze cleaning. <laughs> yeah, I'm going something similar. But well, they were saying I on can... the radio the other day that to clean some of the uh, costumes from Strictly, because Scott Mills was on it, so Scott Mills was talking about it, exactly. that they just spray it with vodka occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's alcohol. That was the last thing that I was doing when in, the, in that lab that I went to for a while was just like, because of the chemicals they were using, nothing was cleaned with water. It was all cleaned with acetone. And that mm. sucks. Because <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm just, you're standing in a room that smells like nail polish all day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you're just rinsing everything in fucking shit tons of acetone constantly. I quite like that smell. It's okay. You get used to it. Yeah, all day might be a bit like <laughs> But I quite like that smell in general. But the amount of acetone you use is just fucking ridiculous. It's like you're bringing in like fucking 10 litre bottles of acetone and just dumping it into the. And then you have like. Because you can't. Because it has to. You can't just run that into a drain. So like you have this sink arrangement that under the sink there's just another container and then you have to take that out at the end of the day and dump it into the giant chemical storage tank mm. that eventually gets shipped out once that gets full right like fucking hundreds of liters of gross oh. <laughs> chemicals boom <laughs> yeah, why exactly. did that not explode well, it's because they know which specific chemicals they're putting in there right. so like, this is where you put a bunch of chemicals that don't fuck it if do anything <laughs> okay <laughs> so they have your inert yeah. chemical they have disposal to, they and have your to, dangerous chemical disposal. They just throw everything in the dangerous pile and then woo! Yes, they have the dangerous chemical disposal area. But does everyone get in there, like, packaged individually? Or? Yeah, you have, like, barrels, basically. Hmm. It's like, this is the barrel for this stuff. <laughs> oh, I, oh, I get it, okay. They segregate it by compound or something. Yeah. That was ridiculous. And the other problem with washing shit in acetone is because, because it's an alcohol-type substance... Not really, but mm. it's one of those types of chemicals, but the, the, it evaporates really fast. So when you're washing stuff with Vesto, it just makes your hands really cold because it's su- oh, sucking all the yeah. body heat out really quickly. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Gloves. Yeah, well, you're wearing gloves anyway. Because oh, right. <laughs> obviously you're not fucking putting your hands in Vesto. <laughs> Constantly. <laughs> clean your fucking hands. <laughs> Yeah. What lab was that again, Zach? Exactly. I don't know. <laughs> Some place. Some place. Wasn't it Loughborough? Or it was? No. Loughborough. I can't remember if we did any weird chemical washers in Loughborough. I think it was we did more mechanical stuff than chemical stuff, I guess. Mm. Like cooking potatoes. What? <laughs> <laughs> that was part of... <laughs> what? That was part of, like, food engineering. Right. Was where it's like, but it was it was about like how heat penetrates the volume of food, so it's like you have to fully cook the insides of things. Oh, right. So it's like the calculations for that, huh. which basically involved doing experiments where you just chop potatoes into variously sized chunks and then cook them to see how fast the heat gets into them. See how well they can. <laughs> that's kind of that's not what I expected to come up in a chemical engineering course. Well, it was. I don't know why there's a food engineering module. I mean, sometimes you need chemical engineering type things for food when it's you think you, well, perhaps in the process of making ready meals. That well, you think is, of more things like like liquids involved in food processes that mm, makes more sense, but not maybe, like solid yeah. chunks of potato. <laughs> but yeah, don't get me wrong. I guess there is science involved in making foods, <laughs> so like or freezer foods. Well, or they are basically packaged foods of any kind. Chemical plants in some way. Yeah, like. Pipes and shit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. well, yeah, the engineering of making. <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe there is something to it, but but then surely you're better off just having a chef that can tell you. No, this isn't good. <laughs> you just have a chef in your factory. <laughs> yeah, he goes around and checks it. Well, it must be. It must do. Like food factories must have. Maybe they have chefs. But 
Don't, don't they, Apart like, from for the canteen. <laughs> okay. But don't they have like chefs there to like, because where they make all these foods and stuff, there's also where a lot of chefs like experiment to like. I don't like, think they do it there in like the factory part. Okay. They probably have like the chef at the start comes up with the idea for the meal. And then the people who know the industrial processes are like, okay, this is how we can make this in a factory. And then they try it and then they give it back to the chef and he's like, okay, that's good enough. Okay, so the food engineer. <laughs> There's no iteration there. It's like, ah, that's good enough. That'll do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Got to get it to market, man. These supermarkets don't wait for anything. Indus. <laughs> I think they do have like special kitchens where they do R&D where they iterate on stuff that they think they can make with the industrial well, processes yeah. for I guess it depends whether the factory is perhaps owned by the brand or something. If it's like one of these like factories that just makes its stuff for a lot of brands. Well, it's probably not don't. like every factory. It might be like one special R&D factory where they do their experimenting. Yeah, maybe. I thought I saw a, show, a Heston show the other day where they were at a, a Nestle chocolate factory and they did have like experimentation kitchens in on that facility. Well, yeah. For, sure they for coming up with new flavours and and things. But some of the factories just have to be big old factories that just make a lot of shit. Yes. Well, it's like, yeah, it was <laughs> Not every Hest- factory has bad another, research. There's another Heston thing where basically there's like one factory in the UK that makes all of the Christmas pudding for like everywhere. Yeah. What does it do for the rest of the year? Though? That's, yeah, that's a very good question. Yeah. <laughs> Probably some other form of cake. <laughs> yeah, some other smaller pudding. But non Christmas pudding. <laughs> yeah. As we. Had in draw from probably Heston one time. Probably Heston's dessert range, I'd imagine. That you can buy from Sainsbury's or whoever it is, or Waitrose. Yeah, like there is a Heston Rory. branded one, isn't there? Um, yeah. Waitrose. So Zeg, what's your position on on the Cadbury cream egg controversy? Oh my god. Oh, yeah. God damn it. Seriously, why would you <laughs> do this? <laughs> It's quite. Well, they, got, they got bought by Kraft, right? So it's Yeah. It's like, but it's not Cadbury's cream egg if it doesn't have fucking Cadbury's chocolate in it. Exactly. Did you try one? C- Cadbury's aren't famous for their cream. <laughs> well, they are sort of famous for that specific <laughs> sort of, cream. Yeah, cream. but it's, it's, it's not right. Oh, no, I haven't tried one. No. Okay. I sort of don't want it's not to. Not quite the season yet. Yeah, I well, like, And I sort of don't want to at principle. I don't want to have a cream egg that's not a proper cream egg. Hey, well, you'll have to try it just to see. But are you going to try it? I always thought cream eggs were slightly overrated anyway. Yeah. But they're fucking ridiculous. Like you can only eat one. Yeah, I only have yes. one a year, ever. and that's year. a small one. But yeah, <laughs> don't know one ever, one. but one a year. <laughs> but I don't know yeah, if I will. Be crazy, because like, they've been advertising those the the, the Cadbury's egg and spoons still, <laughs> which are basically a cream egg, except the cream part is just chocolate. Yeah, but then but is is the outside of that Cadbury's chocolate still? I mean, the whole thing is very Cadbury's branded still. It's all purple. The thing about the cream egg... <laughs> Does this affect all Cadbury's eggs? What about mini eggs? <laughs> what kind of chocolate is that even? Oh, yeah. It's like, I'm not even sure what that was meant to be. Because that's Cadbury's, isn't it? The yeah. thing about cream eggs is, I like, the chocolate that they use, used to use, I guess, on the cream eggs, that was, like, somehow... And it was like It's, like, a slightly different version of dairy milk as well, because it wasn't as hard. It was, like, slightly softened. Mm. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Or it's softened. Or maybe it's, or maybe know, it's just it's not been refrigerated properly. I don't know. Or maybe it's the, like, the effect of the cream. Yeah, exactly. Disintegrates it slowly. <laughs> or, it, in. or it has to have like it has to be more less porous or something to stop the cream getting out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who yeah. knows? Is there, but, a pre- is there a pressure thing going on? But like, I always thought it. If you heat like, a cream egg enough, will it? Here's a here's an experiment, right? right? If you heat a cream egg, does it? Does it melt and the cream get out that way first, or does the pressure inside cause it to explode? <laughs> I mean, it probably melts first. <laughs> I'm not sure there even is any pressure. There's like, there's maybe a tiny air pocket, but the, like the amount of pressure that would generate as you heated it up would be very high. Yeah, you might get a bubble, <laughs> and it probably leak out through the seams because it's not over a perfect seal. No, or even if it is a perfect right. seal, when that doesn't have any leakage, then it's like well, it must be a pretty good seal for transport. Otherwise, you'd end up just op- um, opening the wrapper and just having goop. Well, in sometimes side. they do leak the goop quite a lot. Oh, I it's had like that. only the wrapper that keeps it in, really. I haven't had that. Have you ever? No, it happens never. quite frequently with cream eggs where you peel it off and it's like the actual wrapper is sticky because the goop has leaked out slightly. Uh, no, I've never had that. <laughs> I've never had that. Yeah, you do get leaky goop, don't you? I have seen. I have. I experienced that. It's because 
Do they like inject hey. it in? Is that how they get it in there? I can't remember. Or presumably. Well, it's well, two halves of a mold. It's, yeah, it's it? either either it's injected or it's like poured into both halves and then they just mash the halves together. Yeah, which is possible. I reckon that might be it. Or they only fill one half of it. No, there's too much in there for it to only fill one half. Otherwise, the air pocket would be a lot bigger. Mm. The way to see that maybe would be like. Cut it exactly in half along the line and then see if the two halves of the goop don't match up because they were filled slightly differently or with make, the yellow bit. Or do they make it in colder <laughs> conditions where the goop is solid? I guess. And then when it closes or something, the goop all melts to the right consistency. Maybe. Who knows? Food engineering. Got that now I want the ear clear. <laughs> <laughs> now they're going to be all gross and scary. Now, now they'll be no good. <sighs> Engineer. That's your calling, Zach. <laughs> Cook that potato in 50 different ways. That was a dumb experiment. <laughs> it wasn't just because it was like you're cooking the potato to see how it cooks, but in order to. The actual experiment isn't like a single chunk of potato, it's like a bunch of chunks, chunks of potato in a tin can submerged in water. Right. But then, so in order to do that, A, you have to make an entire can's worth of chunks of potato. Right. But then you're only sticking a temperature sensor in like one, and then you have to carefully position that one in the middle of the can, so it's like the so middle of the, the middle. One, yeah, <laughs> that was ridiculous. So much fucking potato. That's, that's over engineering. Engineering. <laughs> you don't really have a choice though, because there's not really any way of simulating that. <laughs> can you? Uh, so, what food engineering processes would you apply to pizza to make it better? <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, I need to know. Did you chuck the like... potatoes or did you eat them? <laughs> of course you chuck them. You're cooking them in like horrible, gross, like industrial water or whatever, whatever comes out. <laughs> of the industrial lab. water. <laughs> but it's, it's always skanky in labs. They always have like those, like, this is rainwater because we use so much fucking of it, we might as well get some free. <laughs> oh, I see. That's actually kind of clever. <laughs> when it's not distilled water, obviously. Yeah, that's, sure. You need yeah, that, that for cool. other things. I was trying to remember the name of that. Thing. Like, what, what? What do they call that special lab water? They're like uh, distilled. Okay. <laughs> like, for some reason, the word distilled is a special <laughs> lab. Like, it's something like concentrated. No, no, it's like, <laughs> concentrated water. <laughs> That's the acid. But uh, I couldn't, couldn't remember what the what the phrase was. But nothing but water, water. Yeah, it's always it's like it's whenever I think about things I did in labs. It's always just like <laughs> this one time in the lab. It's always just like you use fucking so much of stuff. It's like you, in my goddamn research project when I was whenever you're rinsing anything with distilled water, it's just like you're using so fucking much water because you're just rinsing everything in fucking tons of it because it doesn't actually matter. It's just, <laughs> but then you're always having to go and get more. It's like oh, I need that fucking bottle of distilled water because I've used this entire goddamn liter or whatever. <laughs> that was part, of a, part of a work placement I did back in. 2006, I think it was, like when I was working, worked the summer at Bayer Diagnostic, and I was, uh, it might have might been before, no, oh, yeah, it definitely was, it was like 2003, something like that, and I was cleaning the sensors used in these blood, ga- blood gas monitors for most of the time, <laughs> and it's like, yeah, you're basically like dousing them in distilled water the whole time, and it was a puck ton of them to clean. <laughs> yeah. You'd think they would have like... I guess it doesn't really work because of, because of distilled water having to be like quite precise that you can't like store it for any period of time. Really, it's like you can't integrate like have bit, like pipes for distilled water and then just have a tap that ha- has distilled water coming out of it because that's not really how that works. Because mm. then you, the pipes would make it significantly less distilled almost immediately. Yeah, <laughs> that's all made those... the same plastic yeah good. exactly it'd have to be like plastic flowing you'd have to do like a nightly pipe clean like you do at bars or something right? <laughs> yeah just inconvenient that's the trouble you said bars don't do it nightly they do it like weekly or something or they should I don't, I don't think I've ever been at a bar where the pipes were clean <laughs> how could you tell I've worked at a few bars haven't I in my time <laughs> well yes but how could you tell they were or weren't clean <laughs> well in theory I'd be there by the time someone was cleaning you know at least on one shift you think <laughs> yeah but would you be able to tell the difference if you drank like a beer beforehand and then one afterwards would you actually notice it's <laughs> a good question <laughs> it depends how much of the beer I had before <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> and then whether my taste buds had been numbed by the first one I'd, I'd like to think you could. 
you have comparison there? I mean, I'm sure you could have been there. I, and Dan, maybe maybe you're the better one to add to this conversation than Zach. <laughs> Do you but think? Like, yeah, okay. I'm sure you've been, more than been Zach, to, yeah. More bars than Zach, been, probably. Yeah. You've been to bars sometimes and ordered something from the tap and you've had it and been like, this doesn't seem right. Well, when, it, when it's got to the end of the barrel... Oh yeah, that's definitely not right. Yeah. Yeah, but that's nothing to do with the the pipes. But I'm sure they do need cleaning. But yeah, I've had it where the guys like let you know pouring a pint and like letting it sit and being like, nah, yeah. this is the end of the barrel. Sorry, and all of that stuff. Just that's really annoying because it takes ages because they have to figure out, you know. Well, changing yeah. barrels is a pain in the ass. Yeah, exactly. It, it really is. Small problems of engineering. Yeah. He's got their barrels there having to roll around all over the place. <laughs> Fucking heavy. <laughs> and the barrel stuff on that you have to attach to the barrel isn't that simple either. Yeah. More problems that you think they would have solved by now. Yeah, maybe. Some kind of quick locking beer system. <laughs> but you think they just have like like a petrol station, they just have like a giant underground beer tank <laughs> that the tank, <laughs> tank <laughs> just drives up and <laughs> fills it with like a million gallons. Yeah, <laughs> you just have let's just have vat, vats of beer in the back rather than a million different barrels <laughs> or mini kegs. But then often where these bars actually are, there'd be no way of feeding them in. Yeah, that's but... true. Eggs, beer tankers. It's obviously what you want. <laughs> I like the idea of that. <laughs> so this is this is a podcast about video games. No, thank you for joining us. <laughs> we have some news for you. Well, we don't really. No, no not, that not really. That's why we've been crapping for so long. <laughs> you got any stories, Rob? On the world of video games? On the world of video games? Yeah. No. Well, actually, no, <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> that's not true at all. You actually have one. I have one thing. Yeah, the one, I guess, annoying thing for us who pay a lot of attention to the gaming news and uh, read it on a regular basis, but... One of my favourite sources for news is being closed by AOL. It's so, done. It's we, done. It's over. It's, yeah, it's done and done. It's been a, like some of the posts that have been coming out of Joystick dot com <laughs> over the past week have been kind of like no one wants to go, and it's really obvious. It's like man, yeah. this sucks, and they're all yeah. posting, man, this sucks. It really sucks because Joystick has been great for, for years, and I've it's followed weird- it. I, I mean, I I know the whole space of gaming journalism is a weird one for to actually make money off, but Joystick was one of the best, and it is regarded as one of the best. Yeah, they were um, just they covered everything, um, and they were really they covered the stuff know. that's actually interesting, as opposed to they covered yeah. a lot of stuff, but they only but they did cover things that were going to be interesting to someone, mm. uh, you know. And I'm not knocking Kotaku because they are quite wide ranging in terms of their coverage, but man, there's a lot of shit there I do not want to read. Yeah. Whereas a lot of joystick stuff, at least even if you're just skimming headlines, it's like, oh, okay, oh, is it just? Oh. Yeah, they had a good um, filter there, but but they did they did they shied away from the listicles and yeah, and... none of that stuff. Like I didn't really go in for all their their more in depth editorial stuff. Like I didn't really read their reviews or anything. But that's not what their strength was. Like, um, no, I think they did some really good reporting, like for, I mean, for like a live feed of rolling news, which was really really cool. It's kind of frustrating them, like... in a way because they made a made, they made a large push <coughs> or they made a point over um, the New Year period that they were going to be dropping review scores because they felt that they weren't. Uh, that it was a bad way of judging whether or not you know a person's opinion of something they they were like well if we think it's worth playing we'll give it the joystick mark of excellence or something otherwise read the read the review and make your own mind up it's like they they yeah. they, they, they they've fallen out of the concept of review scores and a lot, i think a lot of journalists and outlets like that go through the same argument frequently because a score is an opinion piece and you can't then, and then it's the intention of a score is to try and compare that score to other game scores, but they might be written by different people and you, you can't do comparisons like number for number. Really. No. Um, and so they just removed it completely, which I respect. I think that's a bold move and it's, it's kind of issuing the trends. It's like, yeah, it would have given, it probably gave that would have given them some shit on Metacritic. I'd imagine like if anyone cares about that anymore. And maybe that's why AOL sort of looked at it and said, fuck, what are these guys doing? Shut down. <laughs> Obviously. It was all about the scores. I don't know. 
So now, this saying. is some corporate co- consolidation thing. I don't think they realize. That's why AOL end up, uh, do own quite a bit of shit that perhaps they should have nothing to do with. Speaking of AOL, in a, <laughs> oh, really? in a dumb tangent to something that really sort of kind of the random sex begin. Yeah, I'm, I'm up for this. <laughs> but apparently it's like, on the 16th of February, Google Talk is going to shut down. So I'm down to aim. <laughs> That's oh, like, this is the last chat program there is left. <laughs> Unless you want to use Skype, which we don't. I'll tell you one that I've started using that's kind of meant for work, I suppose, but I really like it. It's called Slack. Uh, It's like a kind of, uh, you have channels like, um, and then you have, you know, direct message chats or whatever, but it's pretty good for like, it handles a lot of different rich media that you drag drop into it. So you can put a YouTube video into it and it like intelligently, you know, makes it into a nice link and, but that it does that stuff at all kinds of, stuff which is pretty cool and yeah it seems pretty in, and you can have i haven't gone super deep into it but i mean for example at work we've got it so that um we have a a channel for a certain project and that has everyone involved in the project chatting in there but also it has like automated hooks so that like every time there's a push to or there's a build or something it can send a special message into the channel and stuff Okay, that kind of stuff is kind of cool. Is that, yeah. is that like something someone has to you have to self host, or is it like a? No, a I don't think so. Or... I think it's a cloud thing, and that they have you really just set good up a community on it or something. But presumably, yeah. someone has to pay for it. Uh, I think it's free. I can't remember exactly. Maybe it is. There is some self hosting thing. I need to look into it. I've just started using it, but anyway, apparently, it's got really good Android and iOS apps, and probably I don't know. It might have a Windows Phone app for all I know. Uh, but anyway, worth a look. But it's not Facebook like messaging? simple instant what? messaging. Facebook messages. Fuck no. Yeah. <laughs> it's really dumb because it's like Google Talk was good because it was like an incredibly slim thing. There was like, there was a, nothing there. It was just text in a window, <laughs> and that was why I wanted it. And even the aim is like that's you know you're gonna have to turn shit off on that to make it. Bearable. I gotta admit the new, the new version of Skype is a bit more. Yeah, you don't want Skype because that's like ridiculous. There's too much padding for like for yeah. me. There's it's all round. It's They've, not really designed for text more... anyway, is it? Well, a lot of people do use it for the text stuff now, but it's like, yeah, the, like the, the new look of it is kind of a bit more iPhone-y. It's like you want too much. It's too much bubbles going on, and there's no way of turning it off. Well, it's like if you want wide, like the window. That's what I find super annoying is if for some reason you want to make the window a certain width, like much much wider than normal. I mean, and, and most of the time, yes, that's a bad idea. But what if you want to read like some large chunk of text? Sometimes having it wide is nice. But actually, if you make the window a certain size, the internal bit will only go so big. Right. So you just end up with massive margins, and it's like this is dumb. It's like you want you just want a messenger plus for <laughs> Skype. It's like yeah. get rid of all that bullshit. <laughs> That was what was great about Messenger Plus as well. Yeah. <laughs> just removed all the crap. And made Messenger usable. So yeah, now the Google Talk is going away. And the worst thing about it is like they're like, we're going to replace Google Talk with Chrome Hangouts, where it's like, it's an app in Chrome that yep. uses the Google Plus Hangout system. It's like, but no, chat, that is chat? not a chat program. <laughs> can you chat through that? Or? Well, it's based on Google Plus, so, you know, it's using the same infrastructure they already have for their... Hmm. Hangouts chat mechanisms. Well, maybe that might work. I don't know. It might work for that purpose, but it's not a chat line. It's not. I'm not going to have fucking. I'm not going to open Chrome up and then leave it running in the background as a chat line. Yeah. Just so I can communicate with people. I don't know. Do you go for something like WhatsApp or uh, some of, some of those weirder ones? Snapchat. Do you want your Snapchat for your like? Very WhatsApp would messages. be cool. I think the WhatsApp desktop stuff is relatively new, and as uh, there's something where it only works with Android at the moment, but yeah, um, that might be a few. But WhatsApp is owned by um, Facebook anyway, so yeah, who knows what? It's all butts. <laughs> not even sure if it's Chad is dead, man. I'm not even sure if Aim is going to do it because someone just needs to run a Mumble server and then have every chat go through that so you get the text to speech. <laughs> it's like really the only other thing. The only other thing that I want individual chat clients for apart from being a slim program that can just run in the background is like I want logging and oh, yeah, not, yeah. you don't get that it's like Skype doesn't do it no Ames well, Skype maybe does yeah. I haven't really worked out what's going on with Skype Ames you can't export as a file but no, it yeah. just let you go back or like even Google Talk wasn't ideal for that because it logs in your email 
Like it records chats as oh, it email it? messages or oh. maybe email messages. They're stored in a separate folder in a Gmail account. I can sort of understand why Google are getting out though, because they've had so many failed chat experiments. Yeah, but like, it's not like they like it's not like they were doing anything with Google Talk. No. It's like how much infrastructure could that possibly be that they're saving money on to remove it or whatever or shut down the protocol? There might be just places in like because it was still a part of Gmail, wasn't it, for a bit? Like Well oh, yeah, it was integrated into Gmail. Yeah. You could send messages from your Gmail page into they, Google. They chat. probably just saw the stats and were like, no one's using this. <laughs> Dumb. Yeah, it's always a shame when something gets killed, but... Yeah, but all the chat protocols are gone now. Is that aim? Yep, apparently. Still That's there. all I've got left. Or IRC. I just use Twitter and DM everyone. <laughs> I mean, I don't yeah, that kind of sucks. But... I was thinking, like, I, I was thinking that we could just use IRC if I could... But that's still a commitment of connecting to a specific IRC server to be able to even PM people because mm. they go through the server. But the main problem with IRC is chat message length restrictions. Oh, is it? Yeah. It's like, and it's really annoying because it's like... Is that not a server setting someone could tweak or... Maybe, I don't know how exactly how it works, but the annoying thing about it is like, if you're typing and you go over the limit, you know, it starts, it dings, so you okay. know. Yeah. But if you paste something into there, it doesn't really tell you. So you can paste a long bit of text in there and then just hit enter and it just cuts off in the middle of the sentence oh, when right. it sends. Right, I see. It's so like, that's not actually very helpful. Surely like sure, you could just write client, a client right? that would just yeah, uh, cut it in half. So. Yeah. Like, like when I mean, technically, right that, technically that's what like MSM Plus did to, for messenger messages because there was a character limit yeah, on those. Was, and and if you had Plus and you typed an extra long message, it was technically sending multiple messages. It just like hid it. Yeah. It, <laughs> it, it, it somehow, the receivers on the other end will, that also had Plus knew that it could do that. Yeah. That's how SMS works anyway, isn't it? If you, if you write too long an SMS message, it just it sends yeah. two across the network and then it combines them at the other end. It? So it looks like one message. Yeah. There was a, that hilarious news story though, that has been up this week about how emoticons are costing people tons of money because it, oh, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't properly, it doesn't properly like save you any. It's like if you put like colon open bracket and then it turns it into a smiley face, the smiley face actually takes up more character limit because it's not. Well, no, it's more it's, it. the bigger problem with that is that on set, on older smartphones, when it turned it into a graphic, the graphic needed to be stored in an MMS. Yeah. And the MMS well. cost is like 40, 50p a time or something. It's ridiculous. That's stupid. Basically, that'll teach people not to use the notes. <laughs> well, yeah. Because <laughs> who fucking uses the notes? You retards. <laughs> more and more people, from what yeah, I can they, tell they, from people I yeah, know. Yeah, I, it's definitely on the app. In fact, even awesome. devs that I was have been using it that I at work like because we had the uh, at UBS we had GitHub Enterprise and they were just constantly using the emoticons like the thumbs up emoticon like whenever there's a pull request it was like thumbs up and there's even a little squirrel which is like, like the ship it squirrel just like a squirrel with a trilby <laughs> hat and it's like fuck it ship it was like ship it <laughs> <laughs> so there were a lot of it. squirrels going on and uh, thumbs up and stuff. I was looking for one of the guys I was working with was Russian, so I was trying to get a hammer and sickle, but there isn't one in there. So there's a Russian flag, so I went with that. And some stars. I thought, well, that's close enough to communist. It's kind of fucking stupid. They are. That was really annoying. It's like there, there was, I'm sure I've received some on my phone that Gnome has sent me where it's like, okay, why is there a picture of a, a pretty detailed picture of a train? <laughs> <laughs> It's like when when you're typing stuff on the Windows phone, you, it, sometimes different words automatically start creating emotes that you could theoretically insert in like the suggested words bar. It's like fuck you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like no. And tweets that are written on, on on iPhones that then, when you view them on Windows, they have a load of boxes in them. It's like well, wow, that's happening uh, I, less I, now. But um, I got that. Used I don't. I actually don't have a problem with emoticons because I think they're they're a way of solving the problem of expressing tone. Yeah, that's the, the, the traditional they're very, ones. Are, they're a very yeah, concise like... way of doing that. Yeah, traditional just faces, then that's sort of fine. They well, used like just... the one which was like colon s. You used to use that for like confused, oh, yeah. or something. Sort of confused or unsure or yeah. worried. <laughs> well, basically, yeah. I I don't mind so much about those kind of simple ones. But I don't think they need to be an image. I'm f- I'm happy enough with just fucking text. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and he has a symbol. 
I mean, yeah, that like works. most modern phones will convert, won't they? And Skype client will convert. And, and they're ugly. That's the, 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 when they convert, they just... Well, they're always those stupid yellow faces. <laughs> yes, they just, they just get more ugly. Just... Well, I just got I just got a new a iPhone in and it has it has adjust you can switch character set. Uh, do you, uh is that right? No, maybe I'm thinking of the wrong thing. No, I'm thinking of uh, Slack actually that I was looking at the settings and you can switch the the emoticon the style. Set or something. Yeah. But yeah, it looks like yeah, the iPhone has built-in ones in the keyboard. I mean, yeah. now. It does now. Yeah. It was a I thought there might have been a chance to make like escape the Classic emoticons when, when like not called emoticons anyway. No, either. fuck that. Emojis. Doubly fuck that. But well, that was a brand. Yeah, that was a brand. Like, and then Apple bought them or something, and that's why they're on the iPhone now. Or... It's, it's ass. Yeah. But I thought there was a chance to escape that for a while when horizontal emoticons became popular in in especially in IC. Horizontal emoticons. Where instead of instead the of Japanese style, the Eastern you, yeah, style. Yeah, the Japanese oh, style. Yes. Yeah, make a face. Zero underscore zero. <laughs> make a face that's the right way up. Yeah. Yeah, I like the. I always liked the. Um, you know, lowercase o underscore zero. Oh, okay, where it was like bug eyed, <laughs> like whoa. Yeah, the confused. Yeah, that, that one is yeah. useful. The equivalent of colon. Yeah, that was, exactly. That was cool. I find that one useful. But... And there's the classic emote, the the classic horizontal emote for Eve of small small lowercase o seven. Is the salute <laughs> okay? Oh, I see. Because it's a guy yeah, holding up his hand, head. and oh, I've got it. Yeah, okay, I got it. Ugh. So yeah. yes, instant messages are, are dead. Long live instant messages. Guy. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I just got this four G business now, and it is just like having full on internet. Just when you're walking around, it's quite weird. Um, but it makes like yeah, when it, when it's working, the latency is really low. The latency yeah. is so noticeable. So like you send a message and it's like sending a instant message on in the old days. You know, it, it yeah. goes immediately. You don't have that little pause where it's like sending SMS. It's like, oh, it's gone. Well, a lot of phones mask that as well. In fact, yeah, they just sort of say, yeah, it's sent. And then a few minutes later go, yeah, I, I didn't send <laughs> that. By the way. Yeah, they're lying. That's really, <laughs> really annoying when that happens because yeah. the iPhone does that with text messages or iMessage because it will try sending it over iMessage for a bit. And then at some undetermined point in the future, it will try sending it as SMS. And then some undetermined point in the future, it will say, nope, that's failed. And you then, but it, but it can happen so long after you did it. Like, <laughs> yes. Don't use it for anything important. <laughs> yeah. I find that really annoying. I'd quite like to know if it just sent immediately. But then that's the thing. Like, do you then turn something like SMS delivery receipts on and get a text message sent by your carrier every time something did got delivered? Or is that standard now? I don't know. Da-da. And the only, only other bit of news I had yeah. was that Nintendo have officially announced they're getting into the health business in some way. They've been like talking about that for freaking... What happened? What well, was yeah. the stupid thing? The, the well, fitness the, 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 sensor or something? Well, no, it's yeah, vitality. They said, they, no, no, they were talking, well, the vitality sensor was, yeah, it's kind of a dumb thing that they thought was a, that was going to be an add-on for the Wii or something back in the yeah. day. And then they started talking about non-wearables or something. It was the last time they did a conference on this. I think they came out, they had put up some weird graphs that said, like, uh, consoles, handhelds, wearables, non-wearables. <laughs> it's like, what's, what's that? And they, yeah, they basically just come out saying that, that, that some sort of line of healthcare is going to be the next big pillar in the Nintendo business. Mm. So it, it's, 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 it, it will happen. We still don't really know much more than that. We'll other see than what it will happen. does happen. Yeah. But well, we won't see it. It will be something in Japan. Japan yeah. <laughs> we'll hear about it. Yeah. Because it's Nintendo. And the other Nintendo news is the Nintendo affiliate program stuff for YouTubers. Have you heard about this? Yeah. That's weird. No. Well, no? Yeah. <laughs> yes, because you talked about it before the podcast, but no, not on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's assume that conversation never happened. <laughs> Um, explain what are the deets <laughs> god I don't know it's let's plays right so I got, yeah. there was traditionally confusion over whether like um, games companies could claim 
copyright. Well, Nintendo were already we were... slightly annoyed by Let's Plays yeah. in general. So Nintendo didn't oh, like it, especially. Um, what? Even though they were getting like <laughs> free exposure for all of their games or whatever from all these people. Yeah. Um, well, showing... yeah, Nint- 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 have always been a bit funny with that, um, like in a, in a strange way, because like they sort of say, "Yeah, this is great," and then other parts of Nintendo are like, "No, this is bad." Like when Smash Brothers or something was going into Evo or something, yeah. and they wouldn't let them stream it because they were like, "Well, no, you can't do this. You're like streaming our game." Fuck off. Hmm. So they've had a bit of a weird mixed history of it and then they were like yeah after all that they were like yeah okay do what you want and now it's like oh, actually actually the, those of you that are making money off these let's plays yeah we want some of that yeah so in order to do that you have to join the nintendo affiliate program and you have to do it on a youtube channel that only plays nintendo games yeah that's the newest stipulation oh, that they've that's clarified the, that's the weirdest fucking shitty wrinkle though well that's actually not it- actually a problem is it because you just make a second channel yeah, that's the your yeah, Nintendo you have, only channel and link this, it to your original channel. But you already you know have your subscribers you, the, to your original exactly. channel. But it's not, not going to be that much of an effort. You'd it really like, is. It is. Because put it on ever, the front page of your YouTube channel. Have you put it in your front page video that says, here's my Nintendo channel. Have, have, have you ever seen YouTube any of these YouTube, YouTube videos? Like, channels, but do you what, know, what you know like, every single time they spend like five, ten seconds of their two minute long video pleading with people to please like and subscribe like because so many people everyone don't. does that that's not actually a thing that's not because they well yes it is a thing it's definitely for a thing to do it it's because yeah, it's are. what everyone it's, does it's one of those things that I, I, it shouldn't be a thing they wouldn't ask it every time to do that. if they weren't desperate for people to press the subscribe button because they want yeah, that there's, there's no actual impact of that because the people who the people who are like already big who are saying at the end of the video it doesn't actually have any effect, and the people who are tiny like us who are saying at the end of the video, no one hears it, so it doesn't make any difference then. Yeah, there's like there's... maybe a middle range where it has any effect at all. The, no, the, the, the people that point. are really big got there by from being really small, you know. They got yeah, there not by doing because that. they kept telling people to like and subscribe. It was just a random occurrence where people suddenly decided to come to them. I yeah, think they're definitely right. linked. That's how YouTube I don't works. think it's a random occurrence that people get get popular. Uh, they get popular kinda, because of word of mouth, not yeah. because of the number of subscribers on their YouTube channel makes them float to the top of a list somewhere. No, I don't know, though. It, it, it is I... about who you know more than it is about random discovery. Um, if you have a group of vocal friends, for instance, things become bigger much faster. If you were a friend of PewDiePie, for instance, <laughs> yeah. you could expect probably to get a million hits like that. Yeah, if he just it's, said your channel yeah, name that's or, true. or even your name. <laughs> it's, it is who you know and where you get linked from. But who, I don't what, think that what the person hit- with an audience can already talk about you. It's nothing to do with discovery anymore. Yeah, but the people because that... you just can't get discovered unless people like do that. Like unless you have friends that are willing to do that. I mean, you can plead all you want at the end, but anyone who uses YouTube knows to do that. If they if like if they like what they or, see, or, like, subscribe or like it. Do it. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's the problem that we have actually, because oh, yeah. we have a lot of friends that just don't share <laughs> that are, that are the sort of Facebook and Twitter um, quiet types. Yes, and uh, so that's where we hit issues in terms of growth. I don't think that all the popular people would keep saying please subscribe if they didn't mean it. They would just they wouldn't need to put that into their video at all, and they all do without fail. I know what you mean, but I think we're past that, surely. Yeah, I don't think there's any reason to do that apart from no. it's just something you do. Well, if we were past that, they wouldn't be doing it. I, it's one of those arguments where I don't agree, but at the same time, your argument doesn't have a flaw. It's like of course they're saying to do that because that's what they want. But it's like why when TV shows... There's no like, actual benefit to them from it even happening yeah. at, the, at the point they're at. Where well, like, no, 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 I've no, already that's... got 4 million subscribers. Telling like 100,000 extra people a oh, week yeah. to subscribe isn't really going to make any difference. I suppose that's also true. But actually, <laughs> actually, like in a lot of cases, it's filler for them to like have... Have an outro, basically. Yeah, have an outro and have links to the other videos for yeah. some kind of viewer retention thing yeah. it's like actually the fact that they're saying like subscribe and stuff is just something to fill in the time while they're saying hey these other videos are here as well yeah 
But you're right. It is about viewer yeah. attention. Like, like that's how because people are lazy. They don't go discovering, just like you say. So if they if they actually if you convince them to click that subscribe button once, you're going to get loads more advert revenue off that one person in future than if they're like randomly, occasionally coming across your stuff again. I mean, unless I'm coming from unless perspective. there's someone like me who subscribes to nothing and just uses their history to go back to other channels. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I don't <laughs> that's what I'm yeah, sure exactly. You're the same a, as me. Because I I don't subscribe to anything on YouTube. What I do if I want to subscribe to something on YouTube is I I I hunt around for the very hard to find RSS feed for the channel and I paste that into my RSS reader because I'm an old school <laughs> idiot. Whereas everyone else in the world uses the actual subscribe function in YouTube, which actually but, has a big impact on on YouTube in general. But I don't think a single if anyone with a brain surely doesn't just hit subscribe because someone told you to. <laughs> you would like go and find the other videos that they've done and see. Okay, actually, this isn't just a one off. I no. kind of like that. Like you watch the one or two. Jib. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna subscribe to this because they've got a track record of awesomeness, like the yeah, Inquisition. Well, like and, the, and the other reason that like subscribe do, maybe doesn't always work for everyone is just like. The Jim Gris- like uh, sometimes, Jim Quisition doesn't do this. So sometimes just to make the point, Jim Quisition, one of the biggest shows, they do not say he does not say like subscribe or any of that bullshit at the end. Well, of course he would. He just has a credit sequence with like one panel on it, and it's like, and he's one of the biggest shows. It's like the other reason subscribe maybe doesn't work in some ways is because on certain certain kinds of YouTube channels, you don't want every one of their videos appearing in a feed. You only want the ones you're interested in. It's like you need to subscribe to a playlist almost. Yeah, no, like I agree. Like a sub part of that channel. Yeah. Like if then, I yeah, press the subscribe nice, button yeah. on freaking PewDiePie or whatever, I'd, like my, I already can't even watch one of those videos. My mind would explode. I mean, how many freaking... <laughs> sure, that's not, that's okay, not really what could, I'm talking about. It's not yeah. talking about subscribing to shit you don't like. Yeah, <laughs> I know, but... But like, even if it's like Yogscast or something, I don't know. So they, the ones that make money out of YouTube are putting out a lot of content, and it's like probably yes. more than I would ever yeah. watch from any of them. Probably, probably. Yeah. Well, you'd hope. Otherwise, you know, you're a crazy person. Yeah. Not that I'm so, uh, dead now. No, there's not a judgment of their content, <laughs> but anyone watching that much content from one source must go a little mental. Mm. It depends how much content. Yeah. Like daily can be ridiculous. But sometimes you just need something to watch. All yeah, that's true. Like this is true. Day. Like while you're eating dinner or something, half an hour video. Mm. Well, I probably do the equivalent of subscribing to the Giant Bomb equivalent YouTube video channel, which doesn't exist, mm. I guess, but or it kind no, of does. It, but it does. But, yeah. Um, but if they you know, I would, I would like look at all of their video content and decide and pick from that which one I actually want to watch. But I wouldn't yeah, mind exactly. getting notified for every video they make. I'm sure that's true of quite a few sources. Mm. But yeah, but I don't know. I think it has. Would be awesome. I'm not Actually. saying everyone does it, but I think it has an effect asking people to subscribe because the button is right there. And if you've watched two or three videos with the guy and he's repeated it three times, you're like, <laughs> if you like it, you're like, okay. And if you're not, you like, fuck off. I'd quite like to know what the demographic is of the people that watch these super famous YouTube stars. Oh, well, like, as far as I can tell from South, like Park, South Park, it's like Park preschool. Joke, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is, it, is it like that? I would really like to know if that's based in truth. <laughs> well, um, I don't know. Like, um, Well, if, if only we were popular, we could look at our analytics page and find <laughs> out. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> this is very true. We're too highbrow for those kids. <laughs> Definitely. <Clearly. laughs> not, I don't think they'd swearing. appreciate your Whoa! finer points of Infinifactory. Or find a points of anything, really. Find a points of uh, Worms United. <laughs> or oh, no, find a points. It's a grenade battle that I lost. I'm still bit about. It's a fine points. <laughs> it's, a, it's a skill game. 90s advert. Oh, yeah. But naturally. I just remembered another bit of news. <laughs> really? It, yeah, it's, it's kind of... It's not really... It, well... This is a bit obscure, but I, I remembered it because I remember watching this stuff. Uh, Monty Oom. Does that na- name ring a bell to anyone? No. No. Okay. Well, there you go. This is the, this is the high caliber of this news. Okay. Um, <laughs> he was a, a, a young, pretty talented animator who did a series for game trailers back in the day called Dead Fantasy, which is like it's sort of like a fan fiction mashup of Final Fantasy characters facing off against dead or alive characters and like some pretty cool choreographed sequences. 
and stuff, who ended up working for Red versus Blue. Oh, okay, so I, did, I was wondering whether that was the same guy. It's the same guy, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, he has unfortunately passed away at a very young age. Mm. So that was news. Oh, that's I want nice. to point it out because he's a cool guy. And he did some good work. I don't know exactly what he was doing for Red versus Blue in the end. Was it? Well, actually, the, was he still, more modern, still an animator yeah, or with an, their stuff? He was an animator, yeah. Because they're more modern stuff. They actually just don't do everything in engine anymore. They, yeah. like, they, they can. They have assets. <laughs> yeah, they can mess mess with stuff. They do it. They do it much more professionally now. <laughs> Not everyone has to be holding a pistol at all times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to do the weird head jiggle. Yeah. I just wanted to make that known because I thought he was cool. So well, you, there. You bummed our new section again. I did, yeah. This is like <laughs> the second time recently <laughs> that this has happened. <laughs> bummed it out. <laughs> bum bum. Yeah, well, you know, death is no laughing matter. <laughs> Lead with it, man. Yeah, yeah maybe. maybe but I don't just remember. I just remember, man. Games! <laughs> <laughs> we really got no more news. What the hell is going on? Oh, we really I, got about games. I talked about the uh, the um, VR headset. Did I last time that I tried? No, maybe not. What? Did I tell you about that? What? I tried one of those Galaxy Gear things. Oh, oh God. The fake one. Yeah. Like, yeah. Stick a phone in it. With the cardboard. The <laughs> sticker, sticker fabric phone in it. Oculus um, branded um, plastic thing. It goes on your it's head. Oculus branded? Yeah, well, it, the, Samsung are working with Oculus on it. It was the Oculus oh, app on it. Anyway, I tried it. Amazing. It's really, really good. Yeah? It was way better than the Oculus V1. It was fantastic. I couldn't believe it. It was really light as well. And um, mm. it had a focus thing. So the, the, the fact that I slightly need glasses was no problem. And the latency was like zero, pretty much. Oh, really? Even it was on a amazing. phone? Because the accelerometers yeah. in a phone aren't. It's Good. not using those. It's it's got the sensors built into the actual headset. Oh, that, that oh okay. Connect that's... to the phone. So the phone is oh, that's, running that's running the three D, and then I haven't looked into it, but apparently John Carmack did a bunch of work to like bypass the latency between the uh, the display on the phone or something. I don't know. Anyway, did some extra work, but anyway, it worked great. Oh. It was brilliant. They've just released them, I think, in America. You can actually buy them. I think it's a pretty niche thing, right? But it. Yeah, totally that, I mean, worked. compared to like the Proloculus, that thing's not going to really take off. But it's well, I don't know. It depends exists. what they do with it. I mean, no one knows what to do with either of them yet. I mean, obviously, yeah. For me, the I Oculus' mean, biggest strength is a specific class of games where you are sitting in a cockpit, which obviously that's awesome for them. But uh, mm. we're still not sure. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was you could it had a. You can what only are you do, do games in which you look around on a phone, though, because you're removing your control mechanism by putting the phone in the thing. Oh, totally. You have to, like, sit down. Like, it has a little touch pad thing on the side of the thing um, that, that you can, I, I, as in touch pad, as in you like you can do swipe <laughs> gestures on it with your finger, which is quite good. <laughs> so right. you can look even more like Jordi LaForge putting your finger Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just like Jordi LaForge because you, 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 you <laughs> move uh, your, your finger up to the thing and start tapping it and stuff. But it, it's actually quite a natural, similar to the Wemo, it's quite a natural mechanism to just to have a cursor where you just look at the thing and tap. And, and mm. so you can go through a menu that way by just looking and tapping, and it's pretty accurate. Um, uh, and yeah, it worked. It had a, like a, a cinema app where you're sitting in a cinema and you can watch <laughs> the best trailers. Use of Oculus technology. Yeah, ever. that was kind of cool. Dumb so the main the one was, yeah, well, it's probably the same, probably the same app from the original Oculus because it had like under the sea thing with loads of fish swimming next to you and sharks and things. And that was pretty mm. cool. It looked like that it thing looked I sometimes. Good. Yeah, I think like so, yeah. like. There may be some simple applications that may work. Maybe they're like for gaming. I guess they'll have to have some kind of breakout controller, yeah, that links to the links to the device somehow. And then, uh, yeah, exactly. Like, I, I, I still can't say I've been totally like overwhelmed by the quality of 3D on modern devices. Yeah, I'm yet to see something that makes me go, oh, okay, maybe these things do have could be a like a Vita replacement or something. But... Yeah. Well, I was super impressed by this. The resolution was pretty good, I guess, because I guess with a phablet phone, which is pretty high, well, yeah, like which is pretty big, at, at least. Well, yeah, I think. Well, I think the native res of the phone is probably more than 1080, but then you half it because you have to go one for each eye, right? Sure. Yeah. 
Uh, but even then, but that's, it was what's like, that's what's happened with the last, what were the V2s or whether exactly. the most recent dev kits for Oculus actually are. But. So I guess it's basically the same as the recent dev kits for Oculus, except, you know, the fact that you have to clip in the thing and the lenses probably aren't as high quality and stuff as you could probably yeah. do a lot better by having a fully built unit rather than one that has to have this modular thing. But anyway, sure. it looked, it looked really, really good. So I was super impressed. Basically, I, I got to try it because Ho, is using them at work um, for some project, um, agency project, and she brought it home just for one night to give it a try. So, and it was super awesome. Nice. Oculus. So yeah, Oculus totally indeed. Cool. But I was su- I was surprised because I thought the Galaxy Gear Samsung thing would be a, like a cheapo. Even though it was built with Oculus technology, I didn't think it would be anywhere near as impressive as the real thing. But having compared it to the old, well, we've only thing, we've only seen we, yeah. yeah we've only seen like yeah uh, whether they've been DK yeah. ones exactly. So. so it's leagues better. So I dread to think. Well, I mean, it'd be, I mean, it's going to be amazing seeing the 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 production Oculus is going to be really great. I think. Yeah, can't wait. Get as hype. As, end up, as long as games end up supporting it, get hype. <laughs> I feel like I just have to have one now, probably depending on how much they are. Just even if there aren't that many games that use it, just because Elite. it's so freaking cool. <laughs> Project Cars for that one game. Yeah, Project Cars, man, and Elite, yeah, and Euro Truck Simulator. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> I saw a lot of. Uh, there's been quite a lot of praise coming out recently for the rec- for the most recent builds of Project Cars. Yeah, yeah. That it's, well, I that played it's, it. It's at shaping the, um, up to be properly, properly good. Yeah, I, I, I like the feel of it when I played it at the Eurogamer Expo, Expo mm. thing. So that's always well, a good sign because it can look great, but if you don't, if it doesn't feel good, they've done what that studio always have done and like focused on the head cam quite, quite significantly because yeah. slightly mad have a bit of a track record of good head cams. Um, did they do Need for Speed Shift? Is that right? They or... did, yes. Yeah, that's cool. Which, which is possibly one of the best examples of a proper realised head simulation in a racing game. Yeah. I mean, it freaking crushes them in... Uh, what am I thinking of? Grid 2 or whatever. Oh, yeah. Grid yeah, three, no, Grid Grid Autosport. Autosport. That's right. Yeah, so they put it in as a bit of a... Oh yeah, we put this in there. Now shut up. Hmm. Anyway, yeah, I'm looking forward to Project Cars. Actually, I'm glad they delayed it. Oh man, it's it's. It, it, I'm looking forward to it because it's finally the sort of Forza esque game on PC. Yeah. That, and that I, I, it sounds like I can really get into. Yeah. So you definitely. know, the wheel can come out. <laughs> Break out the wheel. Here comes the Microsoft side <laughs> the, the wheel. The wheel works. There's nothing wrong with my wheel. It still works on seven, no problem. <laughs> It works theoretically, yes. It's it works theoretically, dirt. it works perfectly. <laughs> works with Dirt 2 and Dirt 3 just fine. I wouldn't call it just fine exactly even. Because, I mean, that wheel is like... You could get a wheel nowadays that would be significantly better. Well, I could use my old 360. For a start. Well, I could still use my old 360 wheel if I wanted. That's true. You could get a wheel that has significantly less squeaky pedals. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> that much. Is like a hundred percent less squeaky. Oh my god! Yeah, the, the pedals are quite irritating. The problem is as well, I, my floor is a bit too slippy for mounting pedals on. Well, you, that's it's, just a matter of what kind of feet it has. If you had yeah. better rubber feet, it probably work. This is true. Games. <laughs> Sorry, we're playing. Have you been playing? <laughs> Silence. No, no one's been playing anything. Dan, you've been playing anything? Did you get very much further in Transistor? No. <laughs> uh, it's not been a good... Uh, not had much time over the last couple of weeks, unfortunately, with all this moving jobs and offices and everything and fiddling, fiddling everything out. I'm afraid I haven't Expert played too gaming much opinion. Trans- trans- <laughs> Transistor. Yeah, I was... Yeah. I wonder what the hell have I got to play? Oh, yeah, I've got to play the Assassin's Creed. That's the next thing. 
on the plate. I think. Yeah, I think it, I was, I was very important. Saying Zach exactly before the cast, maybe now's the time I should start Ask Creed three, <laughs> so we can get another clump of Assassin's Creed podcasts all in at once. Yeah. Are we double Ask <laughs> Creed? Okay, uh, is that a promise? Let's do that. <laughs> no, let's, let's that's not a promise. <laughs> yes, we must begin the Ask Creed times once more. <laughs> Oh, I might decide against it. Yeah, for my <laughs> No. <laughs> okay, fine. Yes, but that is the plan. Well, it, it's a good way of us to talk about multiple assessments. Oh, things. I tell you something. Presumably in a played. shortened space of time. Yeah, so know. I played uh, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, I guess. Oh, really? Yeah, it's good. It probably is expensive. I don't care about that. It was fun. It's, it's a cool, nice little puzzle game. Mm. And it really nicely put together and you know it's kind of what you'd expect from nintendo if you've played that uh what's the game the 3d mario mario was, 3d world 3d world if you played that and you've you've played those levels you know kind of what to expect but obviously they've expanded on it quite a bit but uh yeah, yeah it's very cute and um not not hard but not not stupidly easy you know um some, some satisfying yeah exactly satisfying to uh, figure out what you have to do so quite impressed with uh, with that i would probably play i'd probably get that uh i think it's cheaper than full price isn't it yeah it's not a full price Wii and it title, didn't seem it's like it's still quite expensive because yeah stuff always is because it's nifty but it's high quality stuff and well-designed puzzles and there's quite a few of them so yeah i would check that out that is cool it's clearly designed for a replay as well to try and get the, all the stuff on each level yeah, exactly. The first, yeah, first time you the get the solution, and the second time you get all the yeah. And there's there's like a challenge for each level of like do it without being seen or whatever uh, for bonus points, and there are secrets as well uh, to find. So all in all, pretty cool. How does the uh, all the camera control strike you? Well, it's like totally it? manual. You can swing yeah. around wherever you want. Well, so, I mean, towards the end of the game, apparently there are, like, spot uh, again, just hearing this from Skull, but, like, there are some spots where the fact that the camera is fixed into the sort of middle of the level and pivots around it mean that some areas are kind of difficult to see. Right, yeah, I can imagine that. But, I mean, you can kind of see yourself through walls and stuff with highlighting. Yeah, yeah. So, but, yeah, I can imagine it, it probably could be quite difficult if there was something super intricate that was in, in right on the edge of the map and you were, like, trying to get it into view or something. But, uh, yeah, although I'd imagine like they put secrets there intentionally. Yeah, they do. Yeah, it's like exploitable walls and stuff that you can't quite see, and all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, I didn't find it to be a problem. Um, I guess when you go to like a top down, because it's 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 panning around the center of the the map, I guess. So if you go to like a top down and then you start rotating, it starts sort of spinning. Mm. You know, you can't. You can't go over the top, basically. You can't make cool. everything upside down. <laughs> you see cool. what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so, but otherwise, you're pretty free. Hmm. But as I've heard, like Nintendo news, like Metroid Prime Trilogy went on sale on their mm. on their Wii Revival um, sort of system. Yeah. That you know, it was like nine quid or something the last week. It's a bit of a bargain, but I. I was interested right up to the point where I realised, oh, it is just the Wii version. They haven't allowed it to run at full 1080 or whatever. Or it's like, because even if it was just that, if it was exactly the same game with no asset changes, no texture updates or anything, but it just ran at 1080, I would be so in. I could, I could totally play through Metroid Prime again. I could play through Metroid Prime anyway. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, your, I was putting the game cube and whatever. I was tweeted true. about like Dolphin the other Dolphin. day. I don't know if yeah. you saw that, but um, they've managed to get um, Rogue Squadron 2 running at 1080 with like high def textures and at 60 frames a second. High def textures? What, like some kind of hack Yeah, pack somebody or... made a new texture pack for it or something. Oh, uh, cool. Where they cleaned it up. Basically, it looks pretty damn cool. Yeah. And I always like that game anyway. So, And I've got probably two copies of it, so I wouldn't find, feel too bad about <laughs> emulating it. It's a shame Dolphin still can't handle Left Zero properly. <laughs> God damn it! That's too one fun. game I want to bloody play on Dolphin, and it, it's too hardcore for it. They'll get there. They got there with this, so yeah. But there's just, recent it, improvements. 
it's, it's yeah, it's just a, 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 there's just too much going on in F Zero for Dolphin to interpret fast enough. Like the sound is the problem. It's just like the, the sound goes super skippy, and I can't stand that. And it's right. Does it run all right otherwise? Then is it just the sound. Uh, mostly, mostly. The thing is, is when there's too much going on, the frame rate dips, and when the frame rate dips, the sound right. starts to skip horribly. And it's, yeah. Because it's not, it's not expecting it to. Because it's F zero. <laughs> How long have you been messing with Dolphin and stuff? Not a great deal of time because I only picked it up because I thought like this would be an easier way of playing F zero GX than well, I say easier, but I didn't really fancy like I want to see what it looked like in HD, you know, that yeah. kind of stuff. So rather than put it in my Wii, I thought, well, this, this let's let's experiment with this. This is the one game I want to try. Let's do this. And then I was a little bit disappointed. Kind of impressed that it got anywhere. In fairness, but th- then it didn't run very well, and I was like, ah. Oh. No. Like apparently, Mario Galaxy is the thing to do. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that runs really super sweet, right? And, and I'm sort of tempted to see what any of the Smash Brothers might look like running at a higher res, <laughs> like the older ones, because it's like, yeah, the new ones good, but like the previous ones, just I, I still think they're better. Like, so maybe Brawl on a dolphin would be the... I feel like Melee was the peak of that series, not that I'm a connoisseur. Well, that's where the, the community lies anyway, because it's, it's the most hardcore in terms of the pure fighting mechanics. Hmm. Um, you can take it a long way if you're, like, doing it competitively compared to the others. Um, but Brawl is the most fun, if you ask me. Because it's so crazy. Okay. Uh, yeah. So that happened. Is it on to me now? Then I guess <laughs> if you want. What, what does that want to roll? Go on, Zach. Yeah, you talk. Some... <laughs> talk some game. Well, I played so a bunch of things that I played before, but the one thing that I did remember that I had played for not very long that was new for me. Mm. I played some Super Time Force. Oh yeah. Okay, what do you think? <laughs> I, well, the first thing is don't fucking try and play that game on a keyboard. <laughs> wow, well, yeah, because that does not fucking work. Or what, like not actually just not work, or like well, it, straight up, or is it just difficult? I, I could. It's because of the, of the way that when you're because of the way I think that game would probably be better as a dual stick shooter, <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably, but because because of the way that your movement affects your aiming. Yeah, so you're basically having to push diagonal. Whilst you're running, in order to aim diagonally up and shoot diagonally and that kind of stuff, yeah, that's fucking impossible on the keyboard because you're you're have, you're pressing the movement buttons like WASD mm. and clicking to fire, but then like where your mouse cursor is on the screen doesn't matter. It's just like the click is because it's tied to your actual movement. Oh, weird! So that's incredibly confusing. So why are you using a mouse? Like because it has two buttons on it, I guess. Oh. <laughs> Strange. So the mouse cursor actually means nothing. Yeah, it doesn't actually have any effect, huh. which is confusing and not a very good control scheme in general. No, that sounds like a bad way so of playing yeah, you a just game. Use a use a controller with a stick. <laughs> yeah, and then even then, it's kind of contra-like, isn't it? In terms of it. Yeah, I haven't decided yet whether I want to bind a hold position button because I think it would help, but that also makes it more complicated again. Oh, you can do that. Yeah, there's a control for hold. Oh, I don't remember seeing that. Well, maybe no. it's not in the Xbox yeah. version. Yeah. But I mean, it's like in Torchlight and stuff, obviously, the whole position thing when you're a ranged character, that oh, helps. Sure. Yeah. And I think it, you know, because if you wanted to stand still and shoot diagonally, that would probably actually be really useful. Oh, right. Hold position as in stand still and shoot as opposed to hold, get locked. Well, I think there is a lock rope. aim as well. Oh, okay. So that would probably be more style. complicated. <laughs> yeah. Because that's, that's how games like Robotron the voice function, isn't it? You hold the fire, you're shooting all the time, but if you hold the fire button down, then you lock. Which way yeah, that shooting. is the other kind of thing that kind of threw me off at the start. It's like you have to tap the button to shoot and then oh, hold no. it to charge. I pretty much never do that. I'm like, charge, no, 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 don't the use the tap ever for anything. Yeah. Apart from the less oh, you want the bouncing bullets, or some of the char- yeah, some of the characters like perhaps like you don't want to use the charge attack all the time because it's slow or something. And like, yeah, or yeah. Merlin's homing bullets. Yeah, you don't always need to charge that up. No, <laughs> but yeah, so that was weird, kind of awkward to get used to. 
because mm. of the weird way it controls. And the other thing about you had that happened with the keyboard controls was like when it when you get to the ship for the first time, the actual menu, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> after you've got all the tutorial. Yeah. It, I could I don't think it has a default binding for like a left bumper and right bumper on the keyboard. So you can't actually page through the different areas of the ship. Oh. Or at least it never told me what they were, so I didn't know without having to go look at the menu. But by that point, I decided, yeah, I should probably plug in the controller. <laughs> well, why did you even try? It's, it's obviously a controller game. Because <laughs> I didn't know exactly how terrible it would be. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm glad you did it, just so you could tell us about it. But at the same time, it's a controller game. Come on. Well, you know, they could have made it so that, like, where you click on the screen, angled you, like, if you clicked above halfway, the halfway, angled you up. <laughs> On the upwards direction. Maybe. That might be quite the advantage, though, being able to... Yeah, but that's not necessarily... You know, that's the kind of thing that they sometimes do for PC versions of games. They just make... Because of the way PC controls are, Mm. they change it in some way. Should be one of those games that when you launch it, it actually just has the big screen, like Meat Boy did, saying, seriously, (laughs) use a controller. (laughs) Yes, but in Meat Boy's case, that was for a completely different reason. (laughs) (laughs) That wasn't because it necessarily controlled badly with the keyboard. That was because the guy doesn't like keyboards. Well, no, I found it better playing with the controller for that in that case as well. But seriously, yeah, put one of those things on. Yeah, that was the small amount of Super Force I played. I mean, but generally liking it? Or? I guess. Mm, that sounds, sounds I need, very... need to play it some more probably at some point. Mm. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> There's more of it to play. And you've got all the ultra shit to do that I never saw. I th- the ultra stuff is just that weird hollow, the special missions, isn't it? The weird yeah, like challenge training missions. Exercises, yeah. I did some of those. They're kind of... I mean, it's, it's like, I guess it is sort of an obvious way of making puzzles in that game, where it's all, you know, it's all about you only have a certain number of lives or copies of yourself you can swap. You just have to be in the right place when the counter counts down and the thing comes out. Yeah. And it's just like, that's technically how the actual levels work. It's just like contained in these much pared down without yeah. enemies. Well, sometimes. Well, enemies. yeah, it depends on whether, you, whether which character is triggering the thing to start as well. Yeah. Like you've got to factor that in on your level runs. Yeah. And obviously, it's because it's contained within this like short period puzzle in the puzzle zones, you don't have the worry of like, I've triggered that thing, but now I can't actually get to it because I that would, wouldn't have known that I had to have the time reserve set up. I'm oh, sure. Because yeah. there's sometimes in like, like there's some, some bits in some levels where you'll shoot a guy, you'll be just like gunning for a level and your bullets will just hit a guy right on the edge of the screen and which will cause one of the things to come out. Oh, yeah. And yeah, there's yeah. no way you could, you, there's no way at that point that you can actually rewind time to get to that point faster to kill him and let it land on Yeah, you. the only way to do that is to then try and deliberately like, not kill that or, guy or go a long way back yeah and attempt to do a faster run using the slow time yeah but if force. you've already been going pretty fast through then you're screwed at that point yes yeah that can be quite frustrating it's like sometimes there are moments where you need to know the level and really like hold back a bit if you're going for the, the gold things at least yeah and then you've got to do a completely separate approach if you want to get the time uh the, the, I don't know if you've come across the thumbs up man yeah um <laughs> The weird, uh, the, the others or the watchers, yeah, the, the like extra time limit. <laughs> yeah, those those things are hard. I, yeah, they're quite, they're quite fun to try. Mm-hmm. I quite like to try and go for those because you had, really had to approach the levels like in a very okay. I've screwed that up, but I can eke perhaps a millisecond out before I hit that slow time thing, so I can potentially get a little bit further and do this run again without messing the rest of it up. You know that kind of thinking. It's like, oh, this is, it's still good. It's still good. <laughs> I quite like, yeah, I, I, re- I really enjoyed it when I played it, but just because of its different, it wasn't exactly difficult to get through the level and get through the game. The difficulty came on getting all the extra stuff. Mm-hmm. And I quite quite liked that. It was fun. I'm also undecided on the control front of whether I should keep the fire button bound on X or put it on a trigger. Because the trigger just feels more natural, but yeah. it's not really like a trigger. <laughs> it's not like you're firing a gun. You're holding it to charge it and then releasing it to fire. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I, 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 I think I played with it on X. Well, if you if it was presumably on the Xbox, you would have had an option not to. Yeah. I think I think X was my shoot one. So yeah, I'm not I'm not entirely sure about whether I want to rebind that or not. Seems like it might work. Mm. I just don't 
it's like I always want to put it on A, but then you do need to jump a lot. So, yeah. <laughs> but like you have a choice there, either really. You need to have that jump in a convenient position. Yeah, like I said, you know, it's good on a sort of fun rocking action. But yeah, that's why that's why you think maybe you might want to put it onto a trigger because then it's actually even more independent from the bump, jump button. Mm. Potentially, yeah. So cool game. Yeah, I like. I liked. That was really the only new thing I played, I guess. Oh, well, what have you gone back to? Well, I played some more Guild Wars, naturally. Oh, cool. I've got to the point where I decided that maybe I just need to play my other characters more. I mean, apart from my theoretical goal of ever doing more of the dungeons, yeah, if I remember yeah. to look for a group and <laughs> hang around for a while, maybe. But I've like I thought maybe I should start playing my other characters and just like maybe just level them all up to eighty or something. I don't know. Because why not? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Might as well use this experience for something rather than just like using the experience to build up a ridiculous amount of skill points on my main character, which theoretically is useful at some point in the future for like legendary crafting and shit. Oh, is it? Is yeah. that what is that what something about this mastery system? Then? No, you have to spend skill points to buy things for special forge recipes. Oh, do you? That's why you can get so many skill points. Oh, I did wonder. <laughs> But yeah, my main character has like 500 skill points on it now. Oh, so right. I've probably got enough. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I started playing on one of my other characters. Although actually like two of my other characters are already like level 60 to 70. So they, they aren't far away. I leveled one of them up to 80. The Char Guardian. Okay, yeah. And then it's like, theoretically, if I was a Guardian, I could probably get into dungeon groups well easier. Apart from the fact, I don't fucking know how to play Guardian. <laughs> so I'd be completely useless. You managed to get them all the way to 80. You must know a thing or two now. Not really. It's like, it's a weird class. I don't understand. Well, it's like, it's like I can theoretically understand ways to play it PvE, I'm sure. It's mm. like, also, it's quite an easy class to play PvE because there's a lot of things that a lot of things that the Guardians do is just like self healing. Okay. And obviously, you're a heavy class to start with, so you can already yeah. take quite a lot of damage. Like when I'm just hitting a PvE thing, I'm almost not losing any health at all because my health restores on like every other hit or something. Oh right. <laughs> but like that's not actually helpful to how that functions in a group in a dungeon or whatever in a five man. You just worry about yourself. <laughs> I'm sure that would piss everyone off real bad. It's like, you don't know how to fucking play Guardian, do you? It's like, no, I do not. <laughs> get them to tell you. And then I'm sure they'll be glad to. Yeah, because, exactly. Because gaming communities are very friendly like that. <laughs> like, but then that also becomes a problem is like, I wouldn't even know what standard equipment I'd want. Hmm. It's like, so I chose, I, when I got to 80, I was like, okay, what level what 80 set of armor do I want to buy? Yeah, I basically had a toughness set. <laughs> toughness and then like, I couldn't work out whether I wanted to go more power or precision and like, because it's like some of the skills for Guardians are weird where it's just it's like I couldn't theoretically there's quite a lot of things that that suggest that you might want to go condition damage but really the only condition that Guardians have is burning right. like a fuck ton of all their skills and their traits and stuff is just all about burning mm. and they're just constantly setting people on fire it's like one burning of them... doesn't really stack very well no it, does, other, it stacks length other... rather than yeah. strength so. a lot of other characters have good burning as well so it's... yeah and like everyone's doing burning all the time yeah. it's like how important is that but yeah, there's a lot that, of that doesn't sound like there's a whole thing, bunch yeah. of skills that are related to burning and like one of the the guardians like special ability thing like the toolbar or whatever on the engineer their F keys basically. Mm. The F keys on the Guardians are like passive things normally, but then you can activate them for a special effect. But one of those passive things is just like you cause burning on every third hit or something. Oh, yeah. So as you're meleeing, you're just constantly causing a little extra bit of burning. Are there skills that then affect people who are burning, burning yeah. more? Well, like, and traits and stuff where it's like okay. you do extra damage against burning people or whatever. Wow, uh, okay, I guess that makes sense. But yeah, so it's like. I looked at it and I was like, well, there's a lot of things here that suggest that condition damage is a build, but I don't see it. No, I, well, no, because it's, it's not the things that, it's not the damage to your, it, like, the fact that they are burning is what creates other things. So it's not the condition damage that's the thing. Because well, like, I the, think burning is quite a large amount of damage for a condition. Mm. Like, I think burning is probably one of the highest damage outputs of condition, apart from maybe confusion or something. Right, right, sure. <laughs> But that's really difficult to like discern when you're 
fighting people, even on like my engineer or whatever, when I'm using all the different conditions or even the flamethrower, where that's only burning again. Yeah. You don't really notice it. It's just like, oh, those well, numbers it's... come off and they have icons next to them, which yeah. means it was caused by the condition. And they but... Have, but they happen at different frequencies. Yeah. It doesn't burning happen quite infrequently? Yeah, but with it, larger numbers compared to something like poison that's happening like all the time, but with relatively small numbers. Yeah, it's like there's it weird is. ticks and because it's like poison almost seems continuous, like bleeding as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Almost seems continuous, but you'll still see it coming off in discrete chunks of numbers. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and so yeah, the actual working out the calculations of how effective this kind what, of thing is, DPS is is actually really confusing. Yeah. So in the end, I was just like, "Fuck it," and went for like, "I'll have, a, I'll have like toughness as my primary stat because that's passive, basically." Yep. And then I'll use. Obviously, there's something in the trait trees. I think there's probably something in the trait trees of all the classes where it has, or well, maybe more than one, where it has something converts a percentage of one stat into the other. So it's oh, like, "Oh, yeah. look, here's the one for toughness." Oh my god, it's like convert seven percent of your toughness into. Something else, that I know. <laughs> so if you've got high toughness, you can use it. Yeah, so I was like, obviously, I'll have that, and then I'll have like. I'll go for some amount of precision because there's another trait where it's like when you do critical hits, you gain might, and okay, everyone yeah. fucking loves might. Hmm. <laughs> for great justice. Yep. So I was just like, I'll play this, I'll set this guy up in this way, and I have no idea whether that's good or not. <laughs> Although it is quite easy to do PVE stuff with, so I guess that's fine. Sure, yeah. A bit easier than going glass cannon, I suppose. <laughs> what, like, like your thief. thief? Yeah. I've got better at using the thief. It's like you have to. Well, actually, I think my well, thief... your damage output's much higher. Yeah, my thief now. just got more powerful as well. Yeah, but there are still cases with the thief where there's just like certain champions or whatever where it's just like I literally can't do melee combat. Anywhere. I just have yeah. to switch to the bow. Yeah, you can't get anywhere <laughs> near them because I just go, nope, you're dead. Yeah, so that's kind of ridiculous. And then, of course, the other problem with leveling my other characters in Guild Wars is it's quite a lot of muling going on. So. <laughs> I would just shuffle my infantry around and it's like, uh, oh, you're carrying my huge pile of random tonics. Let's move those onto another character. Yeah, and you'll have to deal with all that before you can play as the other guy. <laughs> yeah, slightly inconvenient. But now that Guardian's level 80, I can shove a bunch of stuff on her and stop playing her and switch one of my other characters again. Go back to my Ranger, who I got to 67 before I stopped playing. Oh, man. Well, my Ranger's like, 20 something well yeah because <laughs> you're fresh start on that guy but yeah I mean, I can't, it's like I was thinking about like how much living I actually have to do on my other characters and it's not that bad I mean obviously now you now you skip one quarter of the leveling because you just have yeah. those it's level to 20 things yeah <laughs> so all my characters are more than 20 <laughs> I think two of them are like only 30 though so they've only just started like the elementalist and the mesmer yeah like my my third character, the Necromancer. Yeah. yeah. There's that, and I've been you know looking for opportunities to grind things that might actually matter at some point. I'm trying to get that legendary. <laughs> it's never gonna happen. Although there was an interesting thing that I saw, like in some like pre information about the expansion, where it suggested like one of the masteries that you can get yeah. is like. Gives you all the recipes for the precursors to legendary weapons. Oh wow! Okay. And I was like, wait, hang on a minute. So that really devalues what the legendaries are going. Well, to yeah, be. because I, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure on this, but I think most of the most of the precursors for legendary weapons are like you can only get them through random drops. Mm. Like you have to grind like the world boss chest because they have a small percentage chance to no, drop shit. these legendary precursors. And I was like, hang on a minute, you just tell me you can just fucking craft them. <laughs> yeah. And like, not maybe, just, or maybe crafting them is a really like super. Well, I'm sure it's going to be super expensive. Yeah. But it's, then it's just like not just the precursors for the legendaries that are in the game at the moment, but the precursors for the legendaries that they're going to add in the expansion. Sure. So it's like they're all going to be easier. Yeah, a, there is a you know, there's a potential devalue the marketplace, I guess. But maybe they are too. Maybe that's what they. Maybe they think they're too hard. Or maybe people like me. Well, as we said last night, like they're too hard for normal people, but not hard enough for the hardcore. Yeah. Like we need double legendaries or something. Yeah, double legendary. Well, then there is a there that is takes. a there is an achievement. One of the achievements is for soul binding two of the same legendary. Oh, really? 
Which I mean would make sense for like my engineer where I could just have two pistols. Oh, okay, got you. Yeah. <laughs> it would make much sense if you were like using a greatsword. It's like, well, I like, now I need to have another one. Could you get a legendary greatsword for one character and then get a legendary greatsword for a different character? Well, also it's carry soul greatsword? binded, so you have to put it oh, on the same not character. Soul binded, oh, so not just soul bind two things, but soul yeah. bind it to the same, same character. character. Oh, jeez. <laughs> That's quite pointless. Yeah, it's quite extreme. It would make perfect sense for an engineer with two pistols. Yeah. Would make any sense for any of the two handed weapons. Yeah. Unless you really wanted to be able to weapon switch to two different legendaries during a fight. With two different skins, just because. And, well, I mean, te- it's like legendaries, you can set the stats on them. Okay. Because that's why they're legendary. But technically, you can't do that in combat. So you can have them two different versions of the same thing with different stats set on them. You can set your toughness knife as you run away. <laughs> that wouldn't actually help you because that, that is such an incredibly tiny amount of stat boost. Yeah. <laughs> I guess you could have different sigils on them. I guess, yeah. <laughs> Random lightning. So yeah, that's Guild Wars still. And I also play... Why, I, gotta, I gotta ask, why are you still playing it as much as you do? Because it's been... It's just, I mean, I'm, it's just so much of it that you keep playing. Because, you know, it's just a thing to do. <laughs> it's a podcast game, naturally. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. You can do that while you're doing other things quite easily. Yeah. Listening to other things, at least. Mm. You can probably do it while you're watching something else. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> My brother plays Minecraft while watching movies. He, he's, he's wrong. <laughs> I was trying to think about that. It's like that would only work if you were like mining, I guess. Or if you really don't care about the movie. <laughs> um, yeah, TV maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Even so. Speaking of which, I saw Big Hero 6. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Random cool. It's a cool film. It's a cool film. You recommend it? I do, yeah. It's quite funny. Disney using that Marvel license <laughs> to good effect. Oh really? Is there a bit of Marvel well, yeah. going on? There? Well, your Big Hero Six is a, is a Marvel, is that a Marvel comic, property, okay, but they yeah. yeah, but they meshed with it quite a bit from mm, okay from its from its from its roots, but it's still pretty cool. I and saw um, of... the Kinsman film. Oh, oh well, I might be saying that tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> won't spoil that. But do, you, do you not think it's good? Or do you think it's um, okay? Well, yeah. I enjoyed it. Um, uh, you know, it's the guy who made Kick Ass, right? Yes. So I don't think it was as good as Kick Ass, but I thought um, it's probably better than Kick Ass Two. <laughs> I, I haven't um, seen Kick Ass Two. Um, but yeah, it, it was basically Kick Ass, but with British spies. Fair enough. Pretty much. Probably not a bad thing. Yeah, and um, there was some. There's quite a lot of crazy action, violent stuff. There's one particularly gratuitous scene in a church, which is a bit ludicrous. Um, but I yeah, think generally I've heard of this. Yeah, yeah, it was quite funny. At, um, I suppose. Well, that, my favourite bit was just um, it has Michael Caine in it, and at one point he just hey. reverts to, to he just reverts to old like he does a sort of nineteen sixties Michael Caine at one point. You dirty! <laughs> so that was really <laughs> funny. Um, and there's a bit where a spy orders a martini, but he orders a proper martini, not a crappy <laughs> martini. So that was quite funny. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, you have to let me know what you think, but, uh, mm. yeah. Will do. It was good enough. Where was you going to say? Finish this off. Well, I've played a not insignificant more amount of time in Factorio. Not really more okay. of the game, I suppose. <laughs> right. Just experiments, isn't it? Yeah, building better versions of supply chains and stuff. Mm. I did actually finish a game, such as it is at the moment. Which is not actually finished. Or well, like just get to the end of its tree. Or... Well, no, there is actually a way to actually have the like victory screen pop up. Yeah, right. <laughs> like there is a victory condition, but it's not actually, there's no real game to it. It's like you research a thing, which is really expensive to research. Mm. You build the thing, which is really expensive to build. The thing doesn't actually have a graphic. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> a text box because <laughs> it's not finished. <laughs> you build it and then you wait like 10 minutes and then you win. <laughs> That's so funny. So yeah, I did that. <laughs> it's like I was trying to think about it's the rocket, basically. Yeah, basically it's the same rocket, pretty much. I was trying to think about like the problem with that game is that I like the like the building of the networks and stuff, and working out more efficient ways to do things. 
and they sort of had the right i have the right idea with like the science packs like how you have to make these things that feed into the tech tree and then you need like hundreds of them to research the next thing or whatever because mm. that's basically that's basically your sink of resources sure that's where you're pouring your resources into is to make these consumable science packs but then like the combat is nothing it's like it's complete but yeah <laughs> and not really not not a difficult well it's like it's either too difficult or too easy it's like your character is like like really weak even after you've got like some of the armor upgrades and stuff and the guns your character can carry are mostly quite shitty mm. so your actual character is quite poop but then you research the technology to have like basically little floating orb robots that follow you around and shoot and those are like incredibly overpowered <laughs> mm. so it goes from, so providing you can and in order to get the tech for those robots, you get, or the good versions of the ro- those robots, you have to you have to have killed some aliens in order to get alien artifacts off them. So there's like this like annoying hump in the combat where it's like at the start you're really weak, but you have to manage to kill some aliens to get those first few alien artifacts to research thing, and it becomes incredibly easy from then on. <laughs> right. So yeah, that was obviously not very well balanced or whatever mm. at the moment. But the trouble with it is, it's like. I like building networks. Their fighting is not anything to it. So they have this, I like the actual industrial part of it, mm. but it runs into the same problem of Minecraft and stuff where it's like at a certain point, you're just collecting resources. And once you've figured out the best way to do that, you're, there's not really anything to do. <laughs> yeah. The same as Minecraft. Like and that's, the, that's like one of the reasons why I haven't really finished. I've never got to the end in Minecraft because I get to the point where it's like you have the early game where you're sort of struggling to survive and build your base or whatever. Yeah. But then you reach like the mid game where all you're doing is just collect, collecting a shit ton of resources to prepare yourself for the end game. Mm. And that's where it all falls apart because it's just like, well, it's not, that it's not really either. fun to do the resource collection in Minecraft. Sure. Whereas in this game, it's sort of the opposite. Well, not exactly the opposite. A sort of different problem where it's like setting up at the start of the game, there's the struggle to survive segment as you're starting to build up your base and research the needed technologies to do more advanced things. Mm. And then in the mid game, you're doing the science, but then I don't really see where it's going to go from there. It's like, I, it's like, how do you make that game better? Well, there's, there's certain mods that do it where it's just like, you can add more to the tech tree or like make things that are already in the game more complicated. Right, like where it's like, oh, I'm making plastic by having oil and coal and mashing them together, and then plastic comes out. I mean, you could extend that into a more complicated process and like have more factories involved in this process, mm. and that's certainly a way you could make you know extend that. They probably will maybe add more types of resources or whatever because it's yeah. like iron, copper, coal, and oil at the moment, and there's not you know. Do you need more? Do you reckon they need more like? Uh, you get different maps and stuff where the resources well yeah that are is sort of the other problem with and that game the is tech just like, you have to approach this level and has to be different because the resources are, again, yeah. are in different quantities i mean that is sort of the other problem with that game is that like the maps are just these randomly generated mm. messes of landscape and, and random pockets of resources around right and because there's only these four resources it's not really there's no tacticalness to the resources. It's just like, oh, I've, oh, yeah, I've exhausted good. my local iron deposit. Well, now I just have to build a train station next to this other iron deposit and start shipping it in. And it's yeah. like, that's not really... The layout of the map isn't that important. No. It's not like the distances in Transport Tycoon, for instance, making a difference to the profit. And yeah. The, but then the cost exactly. you have to initially make. And, yeah. And then difficulty with competing with your other transport tycoon people yeah and like how you grow the cities and stuff in yeah. Transport tycoon and that kind of thing yeah so I, I see your point it doesn't sound like there's a lot there's enough like mechanics outside of the actual core transport shit yeah it's like you're you, the game is you figuring out good ways to do logistics and not so much like any kind of co- conflict <laughs> yeah so once you've figured it out there's nothing to it yeah because you, you've mastered the one thing that the game is about yeah so we'll see. I mean, they've still got plenty of time until they get out of Alpha, I yeah. guess. <laughs> I guess it's one of those things, you know, maybe they've maybe they nailed the core yeah. and that's all they're trying to prove right now and now they need to actually build up the game around the mechanics. Yeah, exactly. We'll see. Interesting. Is that it? Well, Other than Master Chief Collection? I mean, there's been a whole bunch of other stuff that I constantly play that we don't need to talk about ever. Fine, that's, that's fine enough then. <laughs> So we've been playing Halo Co-op. Yeah. 
You okay. What the um? <laughs> which one? Wake up, man. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, we've been playing for, starting from Halo Combat Evolved. <laughs> Naturally, Combat Evolved on Master Chief Collection. Oh, that's fine. You know, it's quite. I, it's kind of annoying. Uh, how so? <laughs> but like, I don't like, know like, when when uh, I became really shit, but it's like legendary just these oh, two Oh, we've got now. we've got worse. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I definitely I definitely feel that because like after we played it for a bit, I got the kind of the Halo bug is back in me, and I quite I, like I'm remembering why I enjoy Halo so much. It's a fucking excellent game. Yeah, it seemed like, like I guess I don't really remember whether we ever did play much of Halo One on legendary or not. We've been through Halo 1, the original Xbox edition in Legendary, Yeah, the two of us. But, but I don't remember it being as hard as it is. <laughs> yeah, we, we played o- the OG Xbox version on a 360, that's yeah. how we did it before. Um, it seems harder than... It, it seems harder legendary, than I remember and, 2 and 3 being... Yeah, even. no, and Legend, Legend... Well, no, Legendary and Halo 2, we've never done. Well, no, obviously. Um, because well, it's, not all of it. Halo okay. 2 is probably the hardest. <laughs> we've probably done bits to do in of Legendary. It. Um, whereas Halo 4 is probably the easiest to do in Legendary, from what I remember. I think I soloed Halo 4 in Legendary, not so, not that... Not without too much difficulty. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Halo Halo One is properly difficult in Legendary. But I didn't I think remember it being as difficult. It's just because everything has so much health. Well, yeah. Like any at elites, the, the amount of effort it takes to take the shield down on an elite is well, and an obvious question. But like, why don't why doesn't things why don't things die when you hit them in the back? <laughs> Yeah, but did they, they actually? They, was that not a thing in Halo One? Was no, that only they, in the later I, Halos that they introduced I, the idea of backstabbing, or I, not actually with an animation sequence? Yeah, I'm with but. you on that one. I always always thought that that's always been there, like a, a, a melee hit from the back on any uh, unshielded elite, at least if they have the shields up. Obviously, it's different there. <laughs> it may be. I mean, you can do it. Like there are a bit, a, there's a section in the on the first level where you can quite easily creep up on a, a red elite with. Um, uh, and you know, you just hit it at the back, and you get the ninja medal come up. Mm. And it's like you can, you can you can do that, but they just don't seem to die a lot of the time. It's really I, I think the the hit zone for it being a proper ninja kill is actually quite small. It's a bit like you know spying <laughs> in TF. Yeah, TF the the hit zone. <laughs> it's not very small in TF. Well, oh, no, it's quite it's frustratingly too big in TF. But and you know, there's other things which, as it turns out, have like. Too big in weird directions in TF is my problem. Not so much around the back, like on a flat plane. It's the above stabs I really hate. It's like there's some things that are, are like legitimately, as we we were going through, we discovered things where it's just like, oh, that's actually ass. Where it's just like, oh, if you're well, using the modern graphics, you can't fucking see cloaked elite swords. Yeah, some, <laughs> some of the new design decisions in the remastered version or the anniversary edition of... Halo yeah. One are not good decisions. Yeah, I agree. Um, it seemed like they made did a better job for Halo Two. Uh, yeah, well, I haven't seen that yet. I can tell. Speci- I'm specifically holding off until Zach and I yeah. uh, have got there, so we can have that that combined moment of oh wow, I see what they've done there, like we did with this one. But once we uh, noticed that, it was like, well, that's really stupid. <laughs> well, yeah, the 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 the, the, the cloaked elites. Like their their sword basically is barely is barely visible, whereas before the cl- the, the sword, the sword was super cloaked, visible. Basically. So when you get to those points of the game, and it's actually in your best interests to swap to old graphics mode, so you can see the, um, <laughs> so you can see the see the swords much easier. <laughs> yeah. Um, and there are also other bits where I think the lighting actually is worse. Is worse. <laughs> in some ways. Yeah. Like it's much more moody. The old lighting. Um, yeah. Admittedly, it is properly dark doing Truth and Reconciliation in the old graphics. Uh, I mean, almost impossibly black yeah. in places. Yeah. Where, and so the new graphics are actually better there because it makes it manageable. I guess um, I, it was very atmospheric the, that that level. Yeah, but it's it's too dark. It's it, right. like the, the, the Do you first mean, like, half inside you get the ship? On, no, no, no. no oh, before outside. you get on the ship, yeah. well, inside yeah. the ship's pretty bad as well. It's yeah. night time, pretty much. <laughs> yes, so, but it's it? like yeah. it's black, black. Like, right, and, okay. and there are bits where that level forces you to do some long range stuff because you mm. get a sniper rifle in that level and you can't bloody yeah, you see do. anything. So yeah. you use the night vision. Yeah, that is true. That is why they gave you the night vision. Man, which, like in fairness, only game. actually works in the old graphics mode. If you swap to the new graphics mode, because everything's bright, the night vision just whites out. Really? <laughs> like, yeah. God damn. 
And uh, I get the shields of the elites in the just in general, like when you hit them in the old version, they glow really obviously. Yeah. Whereas in this one, they're barely obvious. It's like the only thing yeah. you can tell is like when they do the, the when flash breaks. when the shield breaks. Yeah. But you needed so, that feedback. That was part of the game. Yeah, as I say, some of it I think is really great. Some of the new, some of the new lighting looks brilliant. Some of the new lighting looks bad. The fact they've brought all the enemy designs into line with how they were in the more modern versions, like right. as well. So the looks of the grunts, for instance, are more like their uh, Halo Three equivalents, and, things. Yeah. and the look of the elites is less <laughs> like they've just sellotaped armor to their body. They've got like proper armor on, <laughs> and. Uh, and, and I think they, they 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 definitely look better for it. And the design of the warthog looks a little less polygonal, <laughs> you know that kind right, of stuff. Yeah. You know there are definite definitely things that are improved, but there are yeah. It's it's just a shame that there are some things they screwed up. And there are I certain think it was just emblematic of, just like the, of the of the le- slight laziness of it was the fact that 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 cool effect where you, if you put your gun in front of the sun it looks so awesome in the original halo and it just they didn't even bother to put that effect into the new one you know what i've not tried that <laughs> yeah i mean you wouldn't notice efficient. unless you were looking for it but it used to have yeah. this awesome like occlusion effect when you like yeah when it did put it was stuff a big sensation the at the time it was, it was like it was a new effect really at the it time. looks like, super it's like, cool Ooh. It still does, but yeah, and the way it shined, the way it shined through trees. I remember that exactly. Yeah, you know, what? I'm not 100 percent sure that effect is there, or no, at least I've not, not seen an appropriate moment. Like not even in the in the old version. I think it's not replicating that. I reckon it probably is in that if you switch to the old graphics mode. But I mean, we'll give it a try. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not as dramatically as it was. Yeah, because obviously the they made it dramatic because they because someone they were was like, like, look at this. Yeah, exactly. Well, there's other little things that I haven't tried out because you remember at the, the time though, the, like it was the attention to detail that was a big deal. Like you know, as yeah. when you're firing the assault rifle, for instance, all the um, the cartridges little would stay cartridges. alive for a really long time and start yeah. rolling down hills and stuff with physics. That was super cool. And uh, if you looked at the uh, the readout on the back of an assault rifle, if you, even if you weren't carrying it, everyone would remember the clip count and still show the Freaking still genius. show the number on the back, um, which you know for the time was super impressive. So good. Um, I haven't not checked highly. out over some of that stuff, and there's some art direction stuff as well that I'm not sure I'm totally on board with. Like, because they've brought the texture detail on the forerunner statues to be less of that grey, yeah, bobbly stuff, and be more like how they were in the recent games. Um, I, I guess from a consistency of like art point of view, they, those are the right decisions to make. But there are places actually where I'm looking at going, I kind of prefer the old design. Especially yeah. some of the Covenant stuff. Yeah. Um, like the inside of the Truth and Reconciliation. I think I prefer some of the old look. I think to you it. have like to just be the way, more just the way the doors, and faithful yeah, just the way, to these things. Yeah, the just doors. Because the the, they, they changed the doors, yeah. like, significantly. Like, before they were, like, those two panels. Yeah, like, two overlapping diagonal panels or something. Yeah. Uh, cool. And now they're more like a, a normal door with a sort of lump in the middle yeah. that, that is either green or red to show whether the door's openable. Yeah. Um, and they've lost the flash that they did when they were about to open. Like they did, like a little wah. Yeah, they did. It, like it was and cool before they opened, and then that's gone in the new version. You still get the sound, but the oh, but the flash anyway, is gone. I'll tell you something. I have played. Speaking of uh, faithfulness in HD updates, I played a little mm-hmm. bit of Grim Fandango on the PS4. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, obviously it is Grim Fandango. Uh, it's really well done, um, you know, and, you know, obviously they haven't updated the backdrops at all, but, then you know, the characters look a lot nicer because they're mm. properly lit and stuff and not yeah. as jaggedy. And, I heard that and, there are places where that doesn't work so well because, like, the joints between... Right. Um, the, where the joint, the joint... The lighting model doesn't, like, totally smooth out where the, the, the polygon map sort of, like, doesn't quite work at the... You know, with, with the, the joints in their arms and stuff, right. it looks a bit. Well, everything I like saw looked solid great. Hit. Yeah. Whereas if, I you, mean, if you if you use the old mode, then the, the actual you don't get that because the, there is no lighting being applied. Yeah, so that's true. Yeah. As far as I could tell, it pretty much looks like maybe a bit better. But now the gameplay models of the characters look like they do in the pre-rendered scenes in the in the old game, oh, sure. which, yeah. which have been not changed at all. Um, yeah. So the backdrop's the same, and the pre-rendered video is the same. Uh, uh, but it, it looks really, really good. Um, and um, also, the, I mean, the best thing about it, to be honest, is so the, there was the old tank controls, 
And then mm. now they've added point and click control. But the best thing about it is the way you would play on PS4 is they've added like camera relative movement control and it's totally natural. And, oh, sure. and yeah. I tried changing back to tank control. It doesn't really work with an analog stick. Um, mm. But the camera relative controls are just super good. So it much oh, there, there is a There is an achievement for playing through the whole game with, with tank, tank controls. controls. Yeah, I would do that on the PC, but I've already played through that game with tank controls several times in the past. So yeah. um, I probably wouldn't go for that. But yeah, anyway, so that, I mean, they went to great lengths to preserve the, the visual look. So when you contrast that with Halo Anniversary, where they've kind of taken a bit of liberty, I think, I feel like yeah. with Halo 2, they, they, they realized where they went wrong there. And Perhaps, we're a bit yeah. more faithful. Well, Gr- Grim is a strange one because, yeah, they, it's not necessarily a remastering per se. It's just a, it's more of a preservation job. Um, yeah, kind of. Know, yeah. yeah, they've done a very subtle job with the lighting, I guess. But it's like, it's, yeah, it's not, it's not a big deal. It's no. More, it's more about the thing about Grim is it's more about the fact that you can now actually run it on a modern PC without having to go through what is apparently like a, an incredibly difficult thing to get right. running yeah. in its original form on yeah. a modern machine. Yeah. It's all sorted. Anyway, so in what I've been playing, Grim Fandango. I something else I've played, thanks to that. Oh, yeah? <laughs> and speaking of running things in an incredibly difficult way, I played some theme hospital <laughs> of Origin. <laughs> oh, shit, yeah. It turns out it's just running DOSBox, so, you know. Yeah, yeah, well, that's what it did for SimCity, right? <laughs> well, I didn't actually run SimCity, so I didn't, wouldn't have known, but SimCity worked in Windows, and I'm fairly sure it works in Windows 7. I yeah, but there's just... Windows version, like an that's the problem. Well, yeah, there was. There was, version. but that's what's lazy about the Origin one, is it's just running out the DOSBox version. I'm not sure whether it is. For SimCity. I mean, the files look different. Hmm. Okay. I don't know, I'll have to experiment maybe at some point. Run my old version in parallel. <laughs> so yeah, see how they <laughs> Probably could, yeah. But yeah, so I played some SimCity, and the main problem with that is they're running it through DOSBox, and whoever... I assume that someone at EA took it in and then fucked around with the DOSBox settings to make it work as well as they could and then package it up and, you know, made it an auto-launcher or whatever. Ship it squirrel. Yeah. But whoever did that was retarded. Because <laughs> it's like, it runs in full screen and it appears in DOSBox there are options to deal with aspect ratios, but it fucking doesn't oh, work. Right. <laughs> okay, that's bad. So it's like, I think it's, I think it might be to do with because it's a DOS game. It's like the the like FMV whatever you want to call it. The cutscenes mm, are in a different yeah. resolution to the game. Sure. So it like it scales okay. all kinds of weirdly. So yeah, it's like the. It, I don't think it's like fully stretching it to widescreen. It's like there's still borders, but it's not. It's not in its natural res when you're in the game. Mm. So I was just like, well, fuck this. And so I just went into the DOSBox configuration files and opened the, opened the install folder and found the config and just was like, no, I'll run it in windowed at like double res and that'd be fine. We should post that if you've got that file. Like to say, here's how you should be running things. <laughs> well, I don't think it's that complicated. <laughs> well, no, but you know, like, I don't know. It, it's kind of a cool thing to have. Can't hurt. Yeah. But yeah, so I did that and it's like, oh, now I can actually play it. Although the other the other thing that always also gets me with like old games is like mouse sensitivity. Oh yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> like in ninety percent of old games, it's always insanely sensitive. Mm. But but the trouble, I mean, I have a mouse with where I can like set the sensitivity. It has like plus and minus oh, okay, buttons. Right. And, you know, I could fuck around with it for in that way. But I don't want to go and make fucking more specific. It's like I have three settings on my mouse. It's like low, medium, and high. And I could go in there and make a whole bunch of other settings and like edit the numbers of DPI and whatever. And fuck around with it that way. But I don't want to do that. It's like, so when I'm running Theme Austin, it's like medium, which is my normal setting, is like way too fast. And low is not quite slow enough. So I was like, oh, I can't be bothered to go and fuck around with this. So I'll just deal with it. And then you run into the classic problem where it's like, you deal with it. You get completely used to it, and then when you stop playing, it's like, oh, now my mouse feels really slow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I played some of that. It's still female still. They don't seem to have the mouse cheese problem that I was mentioning last time. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> they seem to fix that. Cool. <laughs> mouse cheese. So Halo. Uh, yeah. I, I, I guess talking about glitches and stuff like that. And, <laughs> like All the same, right? Yeah. The... There are a couple of sound problems. Yeah, the fucking plasma pistol. The plasma pistol. How did they not oh, notice no. and fix that? That doesn't work at all. It makes me wonder whether this is one of those things that got introduced in the move between perhaps running it running on 360 code to running in 
uh, the one version, you know, given that this bit, this, the Master Chief collection is not already, exactly known for its stability. They've already but, put out like two or three factors, and you would have thought, I mean, they were probably more worried about getting it fucking working at all, but yeah. <laughs> that's quite a major thing that's easily noticeable I as think, soon as you start playing the game. But so, yeah, I think the things that they've tackled with regards to campaigns so far for more. Uh, I don't know, structural elements like making it actually work at all in places, yeah, like exactly. preventing hard crashes. And there was one point where co op wasn't it wasn't giving achievements to the second player, for yeah. instance. And they they fixed all of those. Um at least. But yeah, the plasma pistol. It basically plays the sound of you charging it every time you shoot. So even if you're using its normal fire, it's going Wah! and that sound plays for a while and then cuts. Yeah. It's like And we did have there was like a random time where the music didn't stop. When yeah. we were on the ship, where yeah. was like the mu- dramatic music was being covered up by other music. <laughs> yeah, some sort of like, whoop, 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 which just didn't go away for the entire level. And then carried on playing even when we got to the like end of game screen for a while, yeah. and then suddenly it's like, stop. And then realised, oh yeah, loading pause, I need to stop this. <laughs> that was dumb. And I guess the other thing I'm a little bit disappointed with is they have to... Uh, I, I, I kind of understand this, where, like between... Like if you're doing mission by mission and you're jumping about like that kind of stuff, that there has to be loading pauses. Yeah. Like, but it doesn't. The thing about Halo One is it you wouldn't have a loading pause between levels if you were playing them sequentially normally. Right. No. Like it would just move on. Whereas now you do. Now you get a loading stop um, as it goes to the next mission. Um, it's like they've had to separate it out. Uh, it's quite like reason. the Halo One going into your first level loading. Yeah, I kind of wish they'd replicated that as well because they just used the Master Chief collection loading screen, which is dull. Um, You know, do you remember when we were at uh, EGX, Dan, and you saw that, that, you know, even the multiplayer was doing that where it was going to a loading screen, but rather than having that cool background load that Halo always used to have, it would go to a loading screen. I was like, it's not as good as what it used to be. And the other annoying thing about loading is saving. (laughs) Like, you can't save a mid mission checkpoint if you're in co op. No, yeah, that didn't work. Yeah, uh, it specifically says, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, if you're in co-op, it won't... it won't save mid-mission checkpoints if you need to leave the level. For it some really reason. sucks for some of those longer levels. Oh yeah, because we had one problem where uh, someone <laughs> <Wait, laughs> uh, popped up. I used my account on someone else's Xbox a few weeks ago, yeah. uh, and I set it to make it magic mode, which means that you know connect should detect me. Except it seems to be connecting me there when I'm not. Yes, um, from what I've been told from d- talking to this other person, and it's a. Uh, um, so it signed me out in the middle of a really long, uh, halfway through Truth and Reconciliation, I think it was. Or was it Halo? No, it was, yeah, it was the first mission. But we Halo, were going really okay. slow on that because it was difficult. Yeah, we were playing. <laughs> We've been playing for a long fucking time. It, 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 it takes it like a bloody hour to get through that in Legendary. But it's. Um, yeah, and so you signed out and then it And it's like, oh, that's fine. We'll just, we'll just resume it once I sign in. And it started at the start of the level and like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. That's kind of annoying. Kind of done. Like, what? Why doesn't it do that? It's, it's silly. The old game used to. So God damn it, it has problems. Yeah. Also, I can say with some authority that multiplayer doesn't fucking work. <laughs> Still, <laughs> like it. Yeah, I have not been able to join a single game, and I have tried many a time. Like just thinking, like, oh, maybe it's time of day or something, but it does not work. What what type of multi- were you trying like Halo I, One multiplayer? I, yeah, I tried playing the Halo One. That was the first thing okay. I tried. I thought, well, if I'm playing a lot of Halo One, maybe I'll be better suited to play the Halo One specific multiplayer because I don't ha- actually have very much experience with the Halo One multiplayer. Yeah, I pretty much haven't played it other than when we dicked around a bit a couple of times. Mm. Um, I remember playing it in the Barbican. Do you remember that and killing everybody? I don't know. There was some game exhibition around two thousand. Well, I don't think I was there. Well, when was Halo released? 2000. Oh, about then. Yeah, 2001 ish. Yeah. yeah. And it was new, yeah. and they, for some reason, they had a four play, they had a four screen LAN of Halo, uh, mm. and no one knew what were they were doing. And so you just naded them all. It was hilarious. Anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I thought maybe I could go into that, see what it was, see what the maps were like back then, get a, get a feel for it. But yeah, just I've not been able to. So I thought, okay, maybe I'll try. What is probably the main event here, which is the only ranked playlist right now, which is the uh, Halo 2 Anniversary playlist, uh, Team Slayer playlist. So it's like, well, maybe I'll go into this. That didn't work either. 
And then so I read online, it's like, actually, yeah, if you just pick the normal Team Slayer list, which like plays games from one, two, two anniversary and three, uh, four is left out of this. Um, if you go into that, then that's where most players are. Therefore, you should have the best chance of making it work. And it didn't work. <laughs> okay. So for me, at the very least, it is totally fucking broken. Although there is supposedly like the biggest change they've made to this whole system coming out in the next few weeks in the next patch. Like they're making it sound like the back, most of the back end for matchmaking has been replaced, which at this point can only be a good thing because <laughs> they got it working for the Halo 5 beta. Yeah, it wasn't great. It wasn't fast, but it worked at least. So if they've ported that system across, <laughs> then that, that will be great because in the, rules of, in the words of Drew Scanlon, I want to play it! Come on! I want to play it! But I can't. <sighs> really disappointing. And like, perhaps we'll just have to set up some stupid warthog joust just to prove that it works locally. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know if it works land play, because if, if they can get it to work land play, then there's at least something there, I guess. But... Yeah. Super fucking sucks. But campaign is fine. <laughs> well, that's a certain definition of a fine. Yeah. <laughs> still, it's still playable. Yeah. It's a classic game, slightly boosted up and slightly tinkered with in a way that you might not want. But yeah, but you can just turn all that shit off. Yeah, so. it's still classic. Oh, oh, and the other thing that I think Zach will agree with me on is some of the for some reason the coloring of the new of the HUD. Doesn't seem right. Oh man, it's, it's, it's really it's hard to see how, how, how much your shield level actually is. <laughs> yes, it's a classic. It's actually a problem with Halo in general is that they, for some reason, in way in the past, they decided that their shield bar was going to be a blue bar on top of a slightly less blue background. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when it's halfway down, just, unless you're looking very specifically, I swear it was easier to read. Well, the, yeah, I think it was a the, like, yeah, it was it was like the background was much more transparent. I think, yeah, if I remember rightly. It just it, it's not right now. You can't glance it very easily now. Yeah, and also there was that weird thing where we, um, where I guess we didn't actually stop to check really, but it seemed like the sound was only attached to me at one point. Oh yeah, yeah. Where like I was driving the warthog, but if I wasn't near you, we couldn't hear it. Yeah, it was like so I was the only sounds, sound source or something. Certain sounds are only attached to one player or something. Yeah, that was weird. And I was player one, so yeah. for some reason so the is. is coming out of player two, which is even, yeah, seems like a weird choice. So yeah, it, it, I, I, I struggle to call it the definitive version of that game, and I, I quite, you see, now I actually quite want to fire up the 360 version to see what what was, what that was like, right. to see if all these problems we're talking about were in that. Um, so I, yeah, it's not necessarily the definitive version, but man, playing it at 60 frames... The 1080 is nice. <laughs> mm. it, it's really cool looking. And it's a hell of a fucking game. It's got to be so. Playing it through on heroic mode is a great deal of fun. Heroic yeah. mode is how that game is meant to be played. I guess my problem... This is a problem not just with Master Chief Collection. This is a problem with Halo in general. I kind of hate how they assume people that like Halo are super, super hardcore. <laughs> Because I, I've noticed Why do this they since Halo, that? Where are they assuming well, that? I've noticed this since Halo 3. Like, Legendary Mode in Halo 2 might have been the hardest fucking thing ever. Or, like, yeah. Cairo Station, at least, in Halo 2 might have been the hardest fucking thing ever. And it's like, that's maybe where they sort of... This, some of this started coming from. Right. But then Halo 3, like, introduced the idea of par times and scoring on the levels. Oh, and, stuff, yeah. and they gave you a target with which to hit. Oh, and man, are those difficult. They always have been since Halo 3. And I've, att- I've been... Trying to speed run the second level of Halo CE, Halo as it's called, and it's like, and it, and it wants you to do that whole level in twenty minutes. Um, and in legendary mode, it took us an hour. Which uh, level? That was a different problem. Uh, Halo, it's the second level. Oh of the right, game, the second level. Okay, yeah. Where you, you first land on the ring, yeah, uh, and you're following the soldier lifeboats to rescue them, and it, the marine lifeboats here, and it's a. Uh, yeah, it took us an hour in legendary mode to do it in co-op because it was hard and we died a lot. Um, in heroic, I, ma- I managed to solo it in about 
36 minutes. Is this where you um, um, you drive through the cave and you just drive straight over the bridge? And Oh, no, you have to activate the bridge, don't you? Oh, crap. Yeah, How are you supposed yeah. to get through? And then you have to go to three different locations. Is yeah. it three or two? Yeah, three. Yeah, it's three different locations. Okay. And I want you to do all that in 20 minutes. I normally get over the bridge in nine. If, right. I'm, pl- if, if I'm playing in normal mode, I get really close. My best time is 30 seconds out. But it's properly hard and you kind of have to rely on the events around you triggering correctly um so it's like if the drop ships don't come like quickly enough then that can fuck you up because it's just like something didn't trigger right or that drop ship is hung in air for like 10 seconds now why is it not landing um right so there's some bullshit yeah. like that to contend with and it's like why do yeah. they why do they make yeah. these these deadlock these these things the gun for so hard i yeah. wouldn't mind if it was just a little look because it doesn't feel like a par time that feels like an eagle time you know <laughs> well yeah that's why it's like calling it a par time is kind of ridiculous it's just yeah. like that's that's not what par means no <laughs> par means like average yeah <laughs> And there are achievements attached to it now as well, which is like before they didn't care. Like, but now that there are achievements attached to it, it's like this is something to gun for. This is something I want to try and do. Yeah, and it's, uh, it, it it's too hard. It's too hard. They've gone. They've gone too far. You basically right. just wanted a like a lettered ranking system. It's like that should be triple S rank for the <laughs> for what yeah. they call part by. Well, I don't. I don't necessarily <laughs> want it to, to be tied to achievement points, but I guess that they're trying to say that maybe the hardest of the hardcore are the people buying the Master Chief Collection. I don't know, but I, I think it's it's too, it's they go too far with that stuff, and they have done since Halo Three. And I just dial it back a bit, guys. We're not all super pro. Yeah, we can't speak of that speak. level, Halo. Um, I. I I, I don't know what triggered this. I was looking on Reddit about about maybe the Windows 10 news or something. But I had the thought that it would be cool if, if you have Cortana on your phone, which you do, right? Every time you go yeah. in the tube, it's like... Oh, I don't. It, yeah. No, you don't. They haven't, they haven't deployed it on Windows. Right. Windows. When they deploy it and it's on your Windows phone, you go into an underground station and your phone's like, this cave is not a natural for me. <laughs> <laughs> Someone built yeah. it. So it must lead somewhere. <laughs> I think that would be awesome. That's such a stupid bit of vocal because it's like you're entering this obviously metallic square <laughs> yeah. tunnel and it's like, this isn't a natural cave. And you're like, yeah. no shit. Apparently in like the behind the scenes, like a, the original design <laughs> for that was more was more normal looking like and it was going to be more artificial looking further inside. So it made oh, okay. more sense right. or something when they recorded think, the VO. I think like the doubly stupid thing about that line is you're on the fucking halo and none of that shit is that yeah it's fucking got that ring floating in yeah. space made of metal that's true <laughs> none of it makes any fucking sense yeah, it's just yeah it wasn't formed by erosion it's just a notoriously or, dumb or, or how long has it been there is the question Whoa. well apparently parts of it haven't been there long according to that well okay. yeah <laughs> according to some of the stupid terminal videos you get now where three four three 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 four three was to having a laugh with the train at one point <laughs> I guess Summit could have formed Natch. Oh. Oh. <laughs> be We're reaching well. the end. Um, oh, shit. Uh, I, 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 got, I got more to talk about. Do you? Okay. Really? Um, I guess it could have been natural because they could have like built the ring uh, with like rock being flat and then started some rivers eroding over it and then let them carve out the landscape or something, you know, over a long period. But then they had to put the structures in the valleys and stuff. So they probably had to have the valleys pre-made and stuff, right? Yeah. So no. Anyway, it's totally artificial, is my yeah. opinion. But Halo. I love me some Halo. Halo. What else have you been playing, Rob? Look. Yeah, I was trying. Um, okay, one I can crap through real quick, real fast is it went on deal, and I've been sort of tempted to buy this by a little while, just because I think the concept is interesting. I played a little bit of Minimum, right? The uh, which is a, a multiplayer shooter. And it's called Minimum because of its minimalist, like flat shaded style mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And it's uh, like third person y. Uh, and its main draw is its somewhat unique Titan mode, um, which is it tries to blend a number of game styles together into one interesting one match. So when you kill people, they drop material and you can use that material to craft armor for yourself to give yourself certain perks and stuff. So it's nicking that from sort of like MMO style. Oh, not MMO, sort of MOBA style kills, killing stuff. Yes, it's just gold. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> but then, um, so the game starts with what it calls the Titan round, where like each side of the map spawns a giant, 
uh, friendly unit. And you have to protect that unit by de either damaging the the enemy's titan or by stopping the enemy team from damaging your titan or destroying the turrets along the way that are shooting at them. And it's uh, so the idea is as they move towards the middle of the map, they have a bit of a fight. One of them will win with your help. And then that unit has to move towards the enemy base to destroy defensive walls and then eventually destroy the core. Um, right. But then, so that happens the first time. And it's like, well, that does, tends not to go anywhere because both the titans are kind of weak. And uh, on the first phase, and neither team is really powered up really to do much about it, so they kind of destroy each other um, mostly. Uh, so then the second phase is it goes into a creep round where around the level, little uh, sort of mostly harmless creatures start spawning. But as you kill them, you could pick up power cores <laughs> that they drop, uh, which power up your Titan, making it more effective at uh, staying alive, basically, right. um, the next time round. So there's a rush for everyone to get to these creep zones and kill them all, and then there's a golden creep that comes out that you fight over that is worth a lot of a lot of Titan power. Uh, you go through one of these, and then another Titan round starts, but with the power levels applied, uh, and it repeats like that until either the time runs out or until the Titan makes it to the end. And you know what? For the most part, that kind of actually works. Okay. It's, it's an interesting idea, and it's um and and. The, the flow is a bit funny to get used to, um, but it does kind of work. Um, the only problem with the game really is that it could have done with a lot more polish. Like it's a little janky in places and uh, there's not enough like music or sound assets in places. And um, Just needed just, a little bit just, more baking. Yeah. Just little stuff like that. It's like, it's still in inactive development. There are features that are in the menus that are, clearly not ready yet and they just okay. sort of gray them out and it's like nope this, this doesn't exist yet so there is more to come here but as it stands it's just the general feel of the game just is a bit not right if you know what i mean do you think it will get there then or maybe maybe i don't know i kind of hope so because it's it is interesting and i do like really like the look of it the sort of very simple it looks a bit like if you imagine uh virtual racing but put in a sort right. of but apply a little bit of lighting to it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that sort of like low poly count look. Yeah, and like that arcade look or whatever. Yeah. Me. And make it a bit more bloomy in places. It's it kind of works. It's it's nice. It's a nice art it's a nice design style. Um but as I, say, I just think the actual core game needs a bit more refining. I kind of like how when you're damaging players, instead of them getting like having a health bar or whatever, you can tell that they're getting more hurt because they start to glow. Okay. Like they, the idea is, is that all your all your weapons impart energy, and as they gain too much energy or something, they're on the point of just exploding. And so as you, as you damage stuff more, it gets all glowy and yellow and cool, and it's a it's a good way of sort of telling. Oh, that guy's about to go! Mm. Quick, oh, okay, cool. Got some neat ideas, but it's it's just not quite there yet. Um, and it's like when it's on deal, it's like two quid, so it's you can't really feel bad about it. No, it's worth a go. It's worth give a it go. a give it a shot. Uh, yeah, so I played a, a little bit of that. Um, oh man, but we have to get into this. I'm sorry if this oh. is going way over time, but I played through season one of D4. <laughs> really. The yeah, o the only season of the D4, probably okay. ever, <laughs> <laughs> quite probably. And this is a game you kind of really have to see. It's because it's fucking terrible. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> you have it's... to see it. It's freaking awful. It's it sort of boggles the mind how this thing came about and why it exists and just. Uh, just, just, uh, uh, why? Just why is it? <laughs> why? <laughs> why is it? <laughs> okay. It's, okay, so let's talk about what it does right, first of all. Like, I kind of dig that it's trying to do a detective story with a Twin Peaks vibe of craziness going on. Oh, okay. It's, the way it, the premise of its story and the beats that the mainline story actually takes kind of interesting i kind of like the bonkersness of it and i kind of like the um the, the it doesn't take itself seriously at any point feel of it um 
but that's pretty much all it's got going for it. It's like, <laughs> like and, and and I kind of like the idea of perhaps having a Walking Dead style game that is detective based, mm. making you find evidence and stuff, and uh, do that kind of stuff. I think I think in theory it's a good thing to it's a good approach and a good direction to take it. The problem start with everything else <laughs> it's just it's not good looking i don't think the art style particularly works it's kind of trying to do sort of cell shady sort of posterized shading on things and it's okay it is and it is ugly quite a lot of the time like characters can't smile they don't smile like how i would describe them smiling as if you've ever had a camera that has had the smile adjust feature <laughs> on it that sort of just makes everything ridiculously like over exaggerated U shapes when <laughs> instead of like that, when people smile, that's all that happens. Like the corners of their mouth kind of kink up super dramatically. It looks like they're sort of just pulling a bit of a Kipper's brand duck face. <laughs> like it's a, it's a weird looking thing. And well, it, it's entirely Kinect controlled if you want it to be as well. So it's designed primarily for Kinect. And it's like, so when you're just moving around and examining the environment, you're basically holding your hand up the entire time to act as like a mouse cursor okay. to look at things, which is super clunky when you want to do the turnaround action, which is to hold your hand out to the side and swipe in to, to get the camera to turn because that doesn't yeah. always work. And, it's, and it is actually quite tiring on your arms to just hold them up the whole time. <laughs> To get the because you need this cursor about pretty much the entire time, so the that time it get, the, gets a little bit wearing. Hold yeah, it, up. it does. Yeah, the only time the connect controls work, but and are an absolute benefit to the game, are during the stunt sequences, um, which are like little quick time events. But the game sort of presents them a bit like DDR <laughs> in or like a rhythm game, so you can see the prompts coming up and when you're supposed to to act them. Um, in a sort of rough way, uh, but then you have to act them out with your hands and stuff. So you'll, you'll see a little orange icon coming with an arrow on it. And that means swipe your hand in the direction of your right hand in the direction of the arrow. If a blue one comes up, it's like swipe your left hand in the direction of the arrow. And they map to the action that's happening pretty well. And that those are kind of fun. I wish there were more of those. Um, and they will even do like what they call the synchro stunts every now and then, where there's like a special action required for this particular scene. Like, you need to push this guy away, so push him away. Or you need to outstretch your hand to catch this thing. Or throw a punch, that kind of stuff, to do that. And if you do it, like, it, it, it sort of, it, they, they are trying to put you in the scene. And for the most part, it works pretty well. Um, so I, I, I kind of enjoy those bits. And it doesn't translate well to the control of those sections. Because it's like, instead of swipe your hand left, they'll be like, push the left stick left, and then at the end of it, press a trigger. <laughs> like... And it doesn't feel the same. It's not right. It's like it's one of those things where you really wish the game supported both control methods simultaneously. So you could get the connect out for doing those sequences because it's better for that. Um, and then use the controller for actually just meandering around doing the detective work. <laughs> so if they found a way of making, or if they just did that, then the control problems would probably go away um, in terms of that. Hmm, that would be but, a big win then. Yeah. And it's kind of like I, the kookiness is kind of nice in that, like, there are, like, you know, it's strange in that it appears that there's your cat has turned into a real life girl at some point, but that girl still acts like a cat, but also functions as the game shop somehow. <laughs> it's like there is kookiness like that, that, that no one seems to bat an eyelid in the game world. They just think this is totally normal. <laughs> <laughs> There's, there's stuff like that that I just that I kind of like, and it's like, yeah, fine, okay, everyone's just going with it. This, this is this is this is what you're setting up to be, and uh, uh, but then the middle part of the game is just utter bullshit. Like all the dialogue towards when you first start the case, the actual detective case, especially when you dive into the past and become a part of it, mm. um, then it just goes to shit for a, like a good hour and a half at that point the game's only th like i managed to finish the entire thing in about three and a half hours so it's not very long even if you're trying to find everything um but the, the middle hour and a half of that game is bollocks like all the dialogue is bad and massively terribly acted and all the characters are irritating and exaggerated um i like what they're going for but it's just like it just doesn't work during this section 
like the, the, oh, the there's a fashion designer who is basically in love with a mannequin that he carries around and gets really angry if you call it a mannequin. It's Suki. Uh, Suki. <laughs> sexist. Suki. Yeah. Is mute. Like Suki, like Suki from what's it, True Blood or whatever. I have no idea. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Uh. And there's one character who basically is like one of these sort of super worrying types. And so was, you're on an aircraft for really much the entire game. And it's like, and it's worried about everything. So then you get mini games about, oh, you need to go across the entire plane and check every window to make sure it's not squeaking. And, and then, oh no, the, like the carpets are badly fitted. You must check all the carpets to make sure no one trips over. And it's just like, oh, this is terrible. And she is the worst acted character in the game because like none of the lines seem to match up with like the tone of where that conversation is going like you say something she doesn't believe and it's, you'd expect someone to go what but no and so she goes what <laughs> <laughs> okay or something like that there is a a character who is about twice the height of everyone else wears like a doctor's outfit with a face mask and everything, carries a knife and fork around with him and like holds them up at all times and speaks at approximately 25% of normal speech speed. Like, and you have to have whole conversations with this guy and he's going, I think you like that elk or something. Mass <laughs> no, the answer, uh. Miss. Mr. Young. Mr. Anderson. Anderson. It's, and there are moments like that where you can't help but laugh at it because it knows it, it must know it's being dumb. Mm. And it must know that it's being silly and it's trying to throw you weird curveballs in terms of the plot and what the impacts of you going into the past are and how it affects your memory and blah 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 it's trying to mess with you and to a certain extent that works but it's just so fucking weird I don't understand why anyone has any real love for this because mm. it is just not good it is total bullshit too short but I kind of want to see where the story goes <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that is my official review of D4 Okay. Don't play Don't after D4. <laughs> I think you screwed up the flight me there immediately. Don't play. Don't delay. <laughs> don't, don't delay. Yeah. Uh, how, how don't do download. Oh, don't download diabolical dicks. I don't know. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't download this downloadable. <laughs> this <laughs> downloadable. <laughs> <laughs> don't download dumb dumb dog shit <laughs> <laughs> oh, do I remember not to well I mean it was the game of gold last month so if you've already got it play it and then feel ashamed <laughs> <laughs> or at least play enough of it to get what I mean it's, uh, it's the weirdest fucking crap I've played in a long time Let's see why anyone likes it. Alex Navarro, I'm looking at you. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> through, through nothingness in the space and time. <laughs> somehow reach New York with my All the way to New York City. <laughs> I'm looking at you. It's not good. It's the crappiest game I've played since Crimson Dragon. How about that? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that were game is pretty crap, so... <laughs> A ringing un unendorsement, non endorsement. If I was, to, if we, if we had our thumbs up, thumbs down system, big ass thumbs down. <laughs> big ass. That's the separate brother having big ass thumbs down. That's the separate rating. Like, how would how would the ass rating work? Uh, <laughs> what would it even thumbs up. <laughs> This game is total ass. It's, it's all butt, as Zach has been saying. Of like, this is butt. Yeah. Right. Well, I think that That's review.
concludes this podcast. I think so. Yeah. Yes. It's Thanks for joining us, listeners. <laughs> Thanks for waiting to the end for the big ass. Thumbs up down. <laughs> the big ass thumbs down. <laughs> Don't download. I forgot what we said there. Dumb dog. Dumb dog, dog, dog shit. Yeah. Dumb dog shit. Don't download. This downloadable. <laughs> Oh, there is, uh, there is a, but there do is a download point this downloadable, as in this podcast. Yeah, <laughs> you can't tell someone to download something they've already downloaded. It doesn't work. Well, well maybe they've been it, streaming it. it. Subscribe to our website yeah, exactly. now. If they haven't played, yeah. add subscribe. it to your favorite folder. <laughs> subscribe, <laughs> like and subscribe to our iTunes feed or you can podcast subscribe on iTunes. Open your podcast software on your smartphone or or desktop PC or Mac, whatever it is, and, and subscribe. subscribe to our feed. You so, if, uh, so if you're on an iPhone, hit the podcast app and then, oh no, that's wrong. No, the, here are the steps. Go it's to the, the iTunes step, store app, step one. I think that's correct, isn't it? Or can you search within podcast? No, you can now. They fixed it, right? Well, Go to the podcast app, the store. Yeah. hit search, and then type in uh, Salacast. Yeah. And then you can subscribe and they will auto-download. Or and if you're on Windows phone, I highly recommend you use Podcast Lounge. <laughs> Because the the baked in one isn't very good. So there. So there. It. And uh, we'll catch you next time for more Salacast. It, it never gets old where the guy is being asked to look for D either. Because, you know, it's all about that D. Okay. Bye. Huh? Bye. Oh shit! <laughs> that's, that's why I was looking. That's why I was looking at Rob. I was just wondering whether he was going to realise that he had to leave. Bye. Bye.